It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. What a great panel. Will Harris makes his triumphant return with a brand new app we want to tell you about. Georgia Dow's here from iMore.com. And from Engadget, Devendra Hardawar. Of course, we're going to talk about the new iPhone and the new Apple Watch. Why Apple couldn't get J.J. Abrams even for half a billion dollars. And a fist bump with a falcon. It's all coming up next on Twit. Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twit, This Week in Tech, episode 736, recorded Sunday, September 15th. Leave the phone, save the donuts. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Stamps.com. Buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it, right from your desk. For our special offer, go to Stamps.com, click Get Started, and enter Twit. And by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. They make the home buying process work for you. Their award-winning client service and support will help you every step of the way. Get started online today at rocketmortgage.com slash twit2. And by Worldwide Technology. Worldwide Technology's Advanced Technology Center is like no other testing and research lab. With more than half a billion dollars of equipment, including OEMs like NetApp. And it's virtual, so you can access it 24-7. To learn more and get insights into everything it offers, go to WWT.com slash twit. And by Wasabi, hot cloud storage. Thinking about moving your data storage to the cloud? Wasabi is enterprise-grade cloud storage at one-fifth the price of Amazon S3 and up to six times faster with no hidden fees for egress or API requests. Calculate your savings and try Wasabi with free unlimited storage for a month at wasabi.com. Code TWIT. It's time for TWIT This Week in Tech, the show where we cover the week's tech news with the best people I could find on short notice. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, you're not. No, I, no, I am. We, we work all week long trying to put together a perfect panel like that person there, Georgia Dow. Who wouldn't? This is wonderful. Georgia has the biggest earrings uh, of any uh, twit <laughs> ever, I believe. Those are beautiful. Very Thank nice. You. Thank you. She's senior editor, I Moore, also a trained psychotherapist, which is a good thing because Devendra Hardawar is also here. <laughs> what are you saying? Uh, what are you saying? <laughs> senior editor for Engadget. He's celebrating the end of summer in Brooklyn. Oh, yes. What it's still it's still kind of warm. I'm going to yes. soak it all up as much as I can. Yeah. How's the baby? She's great. She nice. is almost 11 months now, but also nice. growing extra, extra fast. So yeah. it's a lot to keep up with. Yeah. Baby's first mm -hmm. summer. Speaking oh, of boy. babies... We haven't seen Will Harris in a long time. He has a brand new baby, Entail.com. Hello, Will Harris. Hello, Leo. It's so good to be back. It feels like it's been a minute. It has probably been a year or two. Will was one of the original Twit participants going way, way back, like 10, 15 years. Yeah, way back in time. Had a few few jobs since then. Last time and, you were here, uh, you were working for Condé Nast, uh, digital director. For working for Condé Nast. Condé Europe. And, and now you've got, a, from that. you've got a new startup. Yeah, working on a startup called um, called Entail, entail.com, E-N-T-A-L-E.com, which is a, a visual interactive podcast app. So as you're listening to your podcast, you get the links that people are talking about and you get the profiles of the people that are on the show. Nice. And it lets you kind of deep dive into uh, into the audio that you're listening to. We need that. According to Eric in the chat room, you haven't been on in four years since December 2015. Oh, wow. That seems Good impossible. Lord. That can't be right. <laughs> well, welcome back. I apologize. Well, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. So uh, I guess Apple had some sort of shindig on Tuesday by innovation only. There were a few people who said, okay, if you're going to have an invitation that says by innovation, <laughs> you best innovate. Devendra, uh, now, first of all, you probably already have an iPhone, but you can't say it because it's embargoed. Uh, I, do, I don't have it, but I have uh, touched them and they're very nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could say that about any old phone. Um, yes. The iPhone 11 
It was a weird. It was kind of a weird event for Apple. First of all, they had so much mm -hmm. to talk about that they had to jam it in. They didn't start with their traditional ode to money making and the stores. But they kicked. They kicked right into Apple Arcade Plus and then TV Plus and then they went to the watch. By the time they got to the iPhone, which I thought was going to be the story of the of the hour, they only announced one: the iPhone 11. They said the most successful iPhone this year was the iPhone 10R. Here's its successor, the iPhone 11, now with two lenses. And I thought, well, this is interesting. The the big, I think the big story there was the price, which is fifty bucks less than the iPhone 10R at mm -hmm. its launch, six ninety nine. Uh, and then they said, oh, oh, and by the way, there are some other iPhones: the iPhone Pro, iPhone 11 Pro, and the iPhone 11 Flomax. <laughs> I mean, sorry, Pro Max. I say Flow Max because I can't remember the all the all. They the, all have slow fees. There's a lot. There's, so. They all have slow fees, slow mo selfies. Uh -huh. So um, these, this is Apple is now in a TikTok talk situation, aren't they? Since the <laughs> iPhone six, they don't used to be every other year would be an S and kind of the same form factor, but a little bit improved, and then a big improvement in the next year. Like the ten was a big improvement, but the ten S was a talk. Mm -hmm. And this is really a talk to the talk, isn't it? I think it kind of, that speaks to like how uh, smartphone upgrade cycles are working now too. Like most people keep their phones two or three years. Um, it kind of makes sense. There's no point like killing yourself to bring something new and groundbreaking out every two years when you can kind of coast on how people actually buy these phones and take some more time with that hardware. Uh, so yeah, I'm not surprised that the Sears phones aren't too revolutionary. It is nice having an extra lens across the line. Uh, the three lenses on the pros, uh, that's going to be really interesting. Um, they really cleaned up the phone names too, because the 10R and the 10S, and oh, those were all really dumb and confusing. Especially because it was a so Roman now, numeral, so it looked like X. Exactly. It's just, it was a mess. So iPhone 11, nice and clean. iPhone 11 Pro, just like MacBook and MacBook Pro, it's all good. Um, and I think we're all expecting the big, big upgrade to be next year's uh, when we're going to see 5G, most likely. The 2020 iPhones. Yeah. But is there such a thing, Georgia, as a professional phone? <laughs> I mean, really? Uh, yeah, you know, professional for the phone that you have in your pocket, better than, but, you know, no. I understand gonna, a Mac you know. and a Mac Pro. I <laughs> yeah. understand a MacBook and a MacBook yeah. Pro. Or even an iPad and iPad Pro, right? Yeah, that's now Pro you're starting like to stretch it. Yeah, iPhone more Pro is just easy and quick, and it makes you feel a little bit more elite. Yeah. So exactly. you know, but they they need something well, that's short and snappy and easy, and people understand that you're getting a little bit more for it. I think the the thing for me that makes it Pro is like as someone who spends like literally all day on your phone because i'm either like listening to podcasts or making software that's making podcasts it's like i just need more battery life and i think the fact that this year apple finally put more more battery in the back of these things um you know for me like having that extra battery life is what makes it pro actually we don't even know if it's more battery extra hours actually. is a lot you you yeah, yeah you make a huge case so it, now let me ask because i wasn't clear is this five so the iphone pro max they're saying has five hours more battery life than what? The 10s Max, like their equivalent. So it is. Year. It is head to head. It is more, but we don't. We That's don't know a exactly lot. how Five big hours. batteries are. Yeah, we do know that the new display. They're saying I think uh, the new OLED is like 15 percent more efficient. Okay. And the uh, the new processor is likely more efficient too. So these, this is where the battery life is coming I, from. I, probably. I, not I've from also been battery. hearing from a lot of people who've installed iOS 13, the public beta, and 13.1 that that's much more efficient. They're getting oh, yeah. much better battery life. So it's, it's great. A, it's on all three fronts. Apple, uh, the new processor is the A13 Bionic. Is that right? Believe so. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So I think I, I think that's the that's the other annoying thing, by the way, with the pro designation. Uh, last year, the 10R and the 10S phones had the exact same processor. Yes. And that was a big price difference. Now it's like an iPhone 11 basic and iPhone pro still with the same processor. Yeah. And that's I I don't know. I kind of wish there was a little more of a bump there just to really earn that pro title, because uh, right now we, you have the extra camera. Uh, you have the OLED, really nice refreshed OLED screens and the kind of slick, not slick, but like the matte glass back and the stainless steel construction. That's kind Pardon of me. all you're getting. That's yeah. surgical stainless steel. Surgically. Yeah, surgical grade. Which yeah. I thought was really weird because like I'm not going to perform an open heart <laughs> surgery with my phone. I could see that in a scalpel, but a phone, I don't know. 
Yeah, I think for for me the most frustrating thing about the whole um, you know eleven eleven pro eleven pro max is that as you can see here, they ship the case for your oh, new phone a whole week it. ahead of the actual new. Phone. I hate that you get a box from <laughs> AI. <laughs> You and you go, oh, and boy, it's, it's here, it's excited. here. Oh, my word, it's here. And you open the box, and it's just the flipping case. case. You're and like, you, well, you really, you really all in on Apple because you bought the Apple Clear case, which is $40. <laughs> and as far as I can tell, <laughs> Listen, functionally identical to the seven ninety nine one I bought. Surgical grade clear plastic, okay? <laughs> that's what you're paying for. <laughs> but it, you know it'll fit just right, so that's probably important. Um, okay, so the... So the, this is a 7 nanometer processor. This is actually, I think Apple deserves more credit for its custom processors than they're mm -hmm. getting. Uh, this looked like, and it was interesting because they brought somebody, for the first time I can ever remember, from the processor group up on stage. Oh, yeah. It was like an Intel keynote for, for yeah. half a second there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was like, what, what, a half billion transistors or something? It was just, a, it's mind-boggling what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. they're, uh, my guess is they're highlighting these guys because they're eventually going to be making processors for the entire kit, right? All the way up, yeah. to, all the way up to the computers. Yeah. And I think if we're, we're seeing Snapdragon laptops already and, yep. you know, Windows machines running on Snapdragon. So they, they are kind of setting the stage. It just kind of makes sense. Like, oh, but by next year, if we see a MacBook powered by the A14 or whatever, uh, we wouldn't be too surprised, I guess. I do have to say that increased battery life, and it's across the line, although five hours is the longest on the Pro Max. If that's accurate, and we won't know until, I guess I'm going to guess that places like Engadget and iMore have embargoed units that they'll report on. And I'm going to guess Wednesday, usually a few days before they ship, they get the, um, the reviews start coming out in all the main stream publications. So we won't really know. And then Friday, I fix it. We'll, we'll be in Australia. <laughs> and they will get at midnight, they will get their iPhone and take it apart immediately. So we'll then know how much battery. We'll know a little bit more about the processor, uh, the cameras and all that stuff. But, I, I, you know, I think that's if they really get literally get five hours more, that's mm -hmm. huge. That's 30, 40 yeah. percent. That's a big difference. It's a big deal. Like, I don't know if it's enough to upgrade from, like, the 10s models, if you have one of those. You're getting all-day battery yeah. life on an iPhone It, it depends what you do with your phone, right? It's nice not to have to find a place to charge your phone. So if you're using it all the time, this may be worth it. I think it's exciting. You don't have yeah. to carry one of those yeah. not that lovely, you know, hunchback kind of battery cases on the back. Yeah, so that's I carry cool. the... Uh, this is so ugly. I carry... I currently have the, 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 the 10S Max with the battery case. Oh, wow. And it is like carrying a brick in your <laughs> it's pocket. It's like a python <laughs> that <laughs> ate a battery. Yeah, so one of the... Um, so th these all come out on Friday. Friday, coincidentally, happens to be my birthday, so this could be like the nice. best birthday. Oh, happy birthday. birthday. On, on nice. the planet. Because uh, going and picking those guys up and then getting the pipe. Wow, I was going to say getting the python out of the pocket. The python has swallowed the bag. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, it would be, um, be very exciting. That's a Brett Kavanaugh story from college. You don't, you don't, oh, don't want to well, share that one. Um, too soon. Too soon. Way too soon. Um, mm. So that's an example of... Uh, I know it's not because Johnny I have left. But... The Johnny Ive era, it's always been thinner, 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 thinner. Apple didn't say thinner once. <laughs> they said better battery life. Hallelujah. Yeah. They're fine. And they're no, heavier. After, after they the are bend heavier. Gate, yeah. You know, after the bend gate, I think they went, you know what? Thinner is probably not better. I think that people Thin enough. really <laughs> panic stricken. Let's make sure it's actually better. Yeah. Yeah. Thin enough. Battery life is better. Like, they are like getting added weight because of this. Uh, the surgical grade steel and maybe the new display. Like, I... So from just the specs alone, the the 10 Pro Max or the 11 Pro Max uh, weighs half a pound. This is the heaviest iPhone we've Crazy. ever made. Yeah, I feel I feel like they were waiting between that and the um, the new keyboards on the new MacBook Pros. I feel like they were just literally like waiting for Johnny, Johnny to, to leave. The door. Thank and God, they, take they the like, butterfly hey, keyboard with you, Johnny. <laughs> On, put the keyboard back on, add an extra little bit of weight on it. Like, thank God Johnny's not here to, to, to say. I know, it, that about that? I know that can't be the case, but still, it does feel like that, doesn't it? I, can't, I mean, he just left. 
Yeah, this was probably those, in the, the <laughs> before he left. Has this to have been in the works. Pipeline yeah. already. Yeah, this wasn't a quick mm -hmm. fix. Yeah. Unless there was a skunk works, you know, in the back of the campus. When Johnny leaves, we're going to show him this new keyboard. <laughs> well, we already we're have reports this ready. That, we're just not going to tell him. Yeah, yeah. The reports were that he basically checked out for the past couple of years. Yeah, so, so he didn't have who, a know, who knows? To, like how yeah, this yeah. all kind of lined up. Yeah. Yeah, I hope you're right, Will Harris. I do hope there is a new and and by the way, I think it's pretty clear because Apple only announced the low end iPad, the 329 version with the giant bezels. Boy, they look big now, don't they? Those <laughs> giant bezels, the home <laughs> button, the fingerprint reader. Uh, they only announced that, which means, and we know thanks to the um, the uh, European uh, database that there are at least two more models coming. I think that I mm -hmm. saw that. So. There's got to be, and they're gonna. We know there's a Mac Pro coming this year, if you can afford it, and we know that. So we, so I think there's going to be an October event with all of these things, right? Does that make Probably. sense? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I would have to say I was disappointed. Like on the, you know, back to the the sort of entry level iPad thing. It was like it was great that they added pencil support. I really thought a good feature for the for the for the t for eleven. The 11 Pro models would have been pencil support. Stylus. I was really disappointed that, that we nice. didn't get that. Oh, wow. Yeah. With those and giant pencils? It would be pencils? nice to have a shorter pencil <laughs> no, so no, that no, your no. pencil just, isn't no, longer. Like just like the Note pencil. does. Just a little bitty, you know, stylus thing. Uh, that, well, I, I think I, my biggest I disappointment... I wouldn't have minded um, if it just magnetically stuck to the end and yes. like it charged just like it does in the iPad. Oh, it has to be it would smaller. You would lose it so fast. <laughs> I'm good. I would so lose many, it anyways, yeah. right? I would lose it anyways. Although it would be it would be the full circle, right? Which is Steve Jobs announcing the iPhone in 2007 and saying, like, who wants these, like, really awful styluses? Yes, uh, right. You have to sharpen your Apple fingers. The yeah. phone yeah. would be, like, yeah, that that would be a sort of heretical move, it, wouldn't it? it? it my well, they are, would they're making the, the surfaces, is, right? Oh, that's okay. My worry would be how the stylus is charged, you know? Like, if you were plugging them into the end, that always makes you want to go up to, like, you know, when the old iPad had the pencil <laughs> sticking out of the end when it charged? Maybe well, you want to go up and just grab ooh, the pencil and break, it, break off. it off. I had this very strong, unnatural <laughs> urge. Samsung is yeah. Samsung has completely nailed this. This is the Note 10 Plus. They've got the stylus. It's in the body. It pops out. It's charging while it's in the body. I mean, this is, maybe Apple didn't do it because they would have to copy this. I mean, this is the only well, sensible the thing to do. Well, and other phones did that beforehand. It's not really Yeah, yeah. No, new. it's not Samsung that invented it. I'm not saying yeah. but I, yeah. But it would look an awful lot but, like a Note if, if Apple released a stylus And Apple does phone. have a history of, like, terrible, like, charging things. Like, the fact that you still have to, that you can't use your wireless mouse while it's charging. <laughs> the lightning's the on the bottom. The plug, like, yes. goes, like, yeah. right up Come the bottom. Come on. Like that was a Johnny Ive. stupidest Eyes. thing on the planet. Yeah. I blame Sir Johnny for that. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, Before we move we off from did. iPhone, I want to say the one thing I'm disappointed we didn't get, didn't get on the Pro phones is a fast refresh rate. And oh, I was going to ask you. Seeing. I was going to yeah. ask you because Pixel rumors are 90 hertz. The uh, Which one was it? Was it a Huawei? No, no, it was the OnePlus 7 Pro has a 90 hertz refresh rate. Yeah, and we've seen, I think, the Razer gaming the phone. New, that new uh, Razer, yeah. Yeah, like we're seeing more and more of that. On smaller screens, like just having that that movement when you're scrolling is just so much smoother. It's like butter. Like once you see that on a phone, you kind of want that everywhere. And yep. a pro phone, that that's your time to put it in. There are high refresh rate mm -hmm. OLED panels out there. They could have done this. Yeah. Are are the other high refresh rate panels LCDs or they are OLEDs as I, well? I wonder if I there's can't. An issue. I have to look that up. Yeah. Remember, Probably refresh LCD. rates also tied to battery life. In fact, that mm -hmm. was so. The other thing they announced is a new Apple Watch, a Series Five. Uh, oh, can we before we go to the Apple Watch? Yes. Video, can I just mention the colors of the phone? These, I was <laughs> so excited to get the colors of the phone, and they are the most unappealing. I, I might be the only one, so just no, you you're know, right. send your angry hate to Leo, not no, to me. But they I agree are the with you. saddest colors, and I was all in for purple. I was very excited, and it ends up being like corpse purple. That is the color of someone that has died. Purple on my phone. Mint green. <laughs> Corpse purple. That's it's a color. True. Like, come on. It is 100% true. So you're Cor talking like, you don't, it's not a You're talking about the colors vile of the yellow, 11, right? The 11. Yeah. Vile yellow mint green and then corpse purple. <laughs> They're absolutely un It is it is it is a little bit like a bruise. Uh the purple. The yellow is yeah, they've really it's gone for this kind of like um, 
they've really gone in on this like <laughs> seasonal color thing and you know the all the straps that come in seasons but it feels like they just picked um you know your your phone is something that you're going to change less often than your watch strap and it feels like the color should be maybe like more for experimentation but should maybe be a little bit more like uh u- universal yeah I suppose. something you could say that's less red blue green <laughs> something that's appealing more appealing but i'm what sorry the, i'm what the I'm, hell color I'm so very angry. that's the iphone 11 <laughs> which is like the 10r in those half dozen colors the iphone 11 pro has black yeah. white and this weird green green tactical green it's tactical yeah. no but they don't call it yeah. that they call it uh, corpse green but- no, they don't call it that. <laughs> forest green, I think. Is no, 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 no. Dark, dark green or something. Black, yeah. green, black or something. Some weird name for it. Midnight, um, yeah. Mid, midnight, midnight green. green, something like that. But why? What, it's, it's, what is that color? Are they, do they have their fingers on the pulse of the fashion <laughs> world and they just know that, you know, like Calvin Klein, like this is going to be the color for the fall? It's a weird color. Happening. I saw it in person too, no. and it kind of changes depending on the lighting. It's really weird. So in like low lighting, it just looks like silver. You can't even see the green on it. Uh, maybe it was like the production process for making these weird <laughs> cases. Like maybe they saw like, oh, this is kind of maybe a default color. It's kind of nice. I don't know. Baby poop yeah. green. I can yeah. I can, I can tell you as somebody <laughs> who used to work in fashion. Slug goes to soil the, green. Uh, it, Go ahead. You know, the, the thing about these these colors is that like you never see them anyway because the first thing you do is put it in a case. Right. So it doesn't really matter. Um, so right. it kind of doesn't even matter. I well, feel- I'm definitely going to be getting a case. Like you have to get a case. I'm sorry. These are not colors that you're going to want to. Sure. They're not going to match anything. <laughs> they're. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm glad you're you'll, saying you'll that. Know you bought the new phone. That's about it. Because if that I said true. that, they'd said, "Oh yeah, you wear cargo pants too, Leo. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know." I what- do. What the kids I are do doing. I do kind of wonder if uh, these are the phones that we can have without cases because they are making a They're big deal about to be how tough these are. Tougher, yeah. And yeah, I've heard. I've heard there were some crazy stress tests. Uh, people basically like uh, almost hammering these screens and just like wiping off the remnants, like not leaving much of a scratch. So I really want to see how tough they are because I don't like cases. I just want to feel the phone, and I've had to have cases for so long because these things have glass. Yeah. I think they're probably not. It does feel w- I don't think they'll be tough enough is my, my thought. Yeah, I've broken yeah. a lot of phones in my days and I now, I, you know, I'll, I, luckily I'll just like, you know, you put a, it's not a pretty case, but it's protective. I will probably be. So they put the know. phone in a wind they, they, tunnel and then they throw fruit at it. <laughs> yeah, but who, who's ever damaged a phone with fruit or a plastic yeah, toy? Plastic. I, like, I might be wrong. What? <laughs> Give me a so sidewalk. Like, like throw it to a sidewalk. I want to see how it shatters there. Yeah, yeah. it's the weirdest Good ad. Good France. It, it doesn't. Um, the yeah. give it get it back to Beja. The um, it's the, the first year that the Apple Care plan right is payable monthly. Yeah. So maybe the whole idea is the propaganda that you don't need a case for it, but also pay for the Apple Care monthly. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, it's a pretty big deductible, and you only get two chances to break it a year, and et cetera, et cetera. I, took, I, I can do two. Two times is good enough for me. A yeah. year. I don't know if anyone's won't break it more than twice more a year. clumsy. You're pretty sure? I, I've i only broken... I've broken my phone twice one year. But that was, I was testing cases once, which was ridiculous and my own fault. And the other time, I was bringing donuts home, and the donuts started to slide, and I saved the donuts instead of the phone. Oh, man. So Mis- everyone has priorities. <laughs> Mistaken priorities. That's terrible. I would say that's exactly the right priorities. <laughs> <laughs> Save the donuts, leave the phone. Yeah. Uh, camera. It's got low light. It's got night mode, somewhat like night sight, <laughs> which is, mm-hmm. of course, from Google. Uh, in fact, it's doing, ironically, I think exactly the same thing Google does on their Pixel 3 with the stacking of nine photos. Um, it does look good. Apple's somewhat mm-hmm. playing catch-up on this phone, you think? Three a lenses? Bit. I mean, it's a different process, right? Because the Pixel 3, what, it's still just one lens, and they're kind of right. doing that all on software. So this is kind mm-hmm. of Apple approaching it through their hardware thing like their hardware expertise and uh, personally i like having that hardware more but i bought my wife a pixel 3 i'm still so jealous of the photos she gets out of that phone it's an so amazing it'll be thing. interesting to see single yeah. lens yeah. and it's amazing 
Mm-hmm. But Apple. So I'm Apple. Really hope, I'm really hope. I'm really hoping that having the 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 sort of three cameras on the back is going to mean less of a need for like I really enjoy taking um like like photography as a hobby but I never want to have like a a real camera so I have those little mm-hmm. like the the lenses from Moment which okay. are really good like high quality glass that will do you you know anamorphic or telephoto all these kind of things um the ability to 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 maybe not have to have those would be amazing I have already three lenses on my Samsung phones, and I have to say I fell in love with them immediately, especially the ultra-wide. It's really nice to be able to be in a... I like wide-angle photography in general, and to mm-hmm. be in a situation mm-hmm. where you can get everything is fantastic. So we're going to see better photos. I love this high-key thing they're doing. This is a new portrait mode uh, where the background falls off to bright white, and the picture, the yeah. portrait is, is high contrast. I think that's a Make beautiful. your own Apple ad portrait, basically. This yeah. is what they used to look like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's going to be nice. Um, it, it's, yeah, you just need to caption it, think different, and then you're fine. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I guess a, a lot is still uh, up in the air until we get review units, but I'm very curious about how they're going to use those three lenses. Are they mm-hmm. are they all live at once, and then the image is somehow chosen? Well, they have that, that – is it the fusion feature or something that takes – I basically takes a picture with all three cameras and then uses AI fusion to kind of – figure out the best shot based on all the different shots it has. So I think for those kind of things, it kind of does that. But we also saw the preview of this, uh, I forget the name, but it's a video recording app and it can film it. shoot video. Yeah, Holy film it. it can shoot cow. video across multiple cameras at once. That's pretty insane, front and back. That's yeah. a testament to the speed of the A13 Bionic. And one other thing which they didn't talk about, but is going to make a big difference, which is high speed storage as well, right? They're using much faster class as, a, as are many new phones, much faster class storage. Um, and so the ability to save two or three high resolution streams simultaneously. They also, the selfie cam, the front cam is now 12 megapixels. So you're, I can't wait. I'm going to take it to CES and interview oh, yeah. people because I'll have the reverse shot and the, I mean, this is going to be amazing. And also portrait mode from the standard wide angle. Now you don't have to like move back just to do portraits. Right. So right. it's all it's all more functional, nice upgrades. I feel like storage is going to continue to be a problem, right? Everything is 64 gigabytes by default. Uh, all these photos, all this oh. stuff, like those fusion photos are probably going to be huge. Uh, recording 4K video decently on these machines, mm-hmm. like that's going to eat up storage. I would like to see a nice solution for that problem. Uh, maybe making 120 gigabytes the standard uh, maybe making iCloud a little more modern because it's still kind of a clunky thing to use. The fact that the Pro, the fact that the Pro Max comes with 64 gigabytes as default yeah. is like criminal. <laughs> like it's yeah. criminal the amount of money you're paying. <laughs> as an extra, I don't know what it is uh, with you guys, but it's like an extra 150 quid over here um, to get 256, and you're like, this is just absolutely insane. Yeah, I paid one thousand four hundred forty nine dollars for the two fifty six Flomax. Yeah, so that's why I got it in gold. So at least I get something of value. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so you is... can look really good while you're cutting people open with the surgical steel. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. May I cut you with my phone, my gold phone? Uh, I I did. I, Lisa wanted me to get. Uh, Apple Care for her, but I don't. I'm not going to buy Apple Care because I just I feel like it's always a ripoff. But you're going to then get her a nice case. And I got her. Yeah, I want to get an OtterBox. They're not available till next month, so I got her a knockoff OtterBox to use until she gets the OtterBox. For the first time in, that I can remember, uh, Apple is offering it unlocked and SIM free on day of. Usually, there's a delay before you get the unlocked version. I don't know why anybody would buy anything but the unlocked. Yeah. SIM yeah. free version. Mm-hmm. Is that is that um that's never been the case over here. They've always had day one unlocked SIM free. I think free. they had to uh, in the UK. I think yeah, you guys yeah. have laws. Yeah, you got law. Nice. We don't have law over here. <laughs> yeah. The wild West. It's great, there, great yeah. having laws. <laughs> yeah, so uh it's not much longer. <laughs> well, it's cuz the carriers, I think the carriers really didn't want Apple to do this. So Apple at, on a day of sale wouldn't do it, but then they'd sneak it in a few months later. Um but uh, yeah, of course mm-hmm. unlocked. Why would you, you know, why wouldn't you? Uh, all right, I don't. I don't think anything more to say about the phones. I just. I mean, you have to spend some time on it. I think this is a nice upgrade, right? Yeah. Apple. Yeah. I think yeah. Apple's getting a little sensitive to the price issue, which is why they cut fifty bucks off of the 10R to offer the iPhone 11. 
fifty bucks, six ninety nine starting point. That's a good. That's a good place to put it. Um, obviously, uh, as I just said, you can you can end up spending almost fifteen hundred bucks if you want on the phone. And I think what's interesting is that on the price sensitivity side, it's the first time um, that I've seen when when you go to buy the phone as part of the like the choosing your options process it asks you do you want to trade in your old phone yeah so suddenly your you know your thousand dollar phone becomes it's a five hundred dollar so phone yeah not so bad um although i will say that the the, the apple traded program like i ran my last year's gear through it and the you know the answer was like quite jokes it was there's no <laughs> price difference there's no price difference for trading in a 64 versus a 256 they offered me, um, I have the Series 4 uh, gold stainless steel watch with the Milanese loop. Last year I paid 800 for, and the trade-in value was £80. What? What? 90% <laughs> off. And I was like, wow, oh, wow, you know what? I think I'll keep 10%. it and donate it to my dad. Wow. Like it's £80. A <laughs> Series four was saying the steel was 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 mad. But so they're I not thought, even selling. You know, it might be because they're not even selling the series four anymore. They they just could be eliminated could be. that from the lineup. And that's when it you is can funny get how... more money for it. Now it's exclusive. Ah, oh, the only way to get <laughs> it. Funny thing. Sell it on your own. Oh, it's kind of hilarious though. Apple's like turning that around on us. It's like, oh well, sixty four gigabytes and two hundred fifty six gigabytes of memory. It's not causing us. It's not costing us that much more. You know, so uh, we're we're valuing it the same for you, like things like that. It is funny yeah. to see their value considerations when they're not actually selling it. Regent Seven Seas Man in our chat room says something that worries me. He says if you get the unlocked phone, then <clears throat> the carriers that offer Wi-Fi calling will not support it on that phone. You have to get their phone. Is mm. that? Do you know if that's the case? I have not <clears throat> heard that before. Um, it is. It is kind of a feature they kind of have to bake in sometimes. So. Uh. I wouldn't be surprised if, that, if that's true. I will say I hate Wi-Fi calling. Like it, it was a feature that was supposed to work really great to, to help you with low coverage areas. Uh, on T-Mobile, it's always been kind of terrible. And it's one of those things you can't really rely on it unless you know you have rock solid internet. And uh, I, I don't know. Cellular coverage in most places I think is good enough. Like that's the thing. I had a big issue with Verizon uh, buying an unlocked phone and bringing it to them. Ah. Um, uh, my grandparents took my kids to Canada this year and um, I, I checked all of our plans and it said like you're free roaming in can free roaming data in Canada and everything's fine um, and I as soon as they crossed the the border I got this alert uh, you've you've uh, currently spent two hundred fifty dollars <gasps> on 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 Wi-Fi. What? Um, uh, I in, blame at, Canada. At five hundred dollars, we're going to turn it off. You've currently cut, spent five hundred dollars. <laughs> like ten minutes later, you've currently spent five hundred dollars oh, on, on on roaming data. Uh, we're turning it off. Um, and it it was because my younger son's phone I had brought in. I had bought it Best Buy. And and brought in, and so they said they said we don't offer uh, international roaming on phones you bring in. Hmm. So that's oh, terrible. Beware. Wow. Always turn off uh, international data. Yeah. Always. Yeah. So here's the on the Apple site. This is the explanation, which is clear as mud. Will my new iPhone be unlocked? And it says nearly all iPhone mo models sold on Apple.com and at the Apple Store are unlocked. Nearly all. Uh, the exception is when you buy a phone with AT&T Next, then it's locked to AT&T, which makes sense. That's a pay-as-you-go uh, phone. But but any carrier, if you pay for it outright or use iPhone payments, will be unlocked. So I don't know. How, uh, the SIM-free model just doesn't come with a SIM. So it hmm. says purchase a SIM-free model. This is just like any other iPhone but doesn't have a carrier's nano SIM. Since you have to have a carrier's SIM to use it, I can't imagine that it's limited in any other way. So this is a good time to to remind people about eSIM. By the way, if you're getting a new phone, do the eSIM. If you're not planning to like swap your cards a lot across different phones, because then if you go international, then you can plug in a physical SIM. Oh, would it be then a dual both. SIM? It'll be a dual SIM yeah, phone. Yeah, it is dual SIM. Like they were dual oh. SIM since last year, but one has to be eSIM. Oh. And the only way it really works is if your local one is eSIM. Very interesting. Um. Hmm. And 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 do all carriers support eSIM? 
That's a good question. I, I know T-Mobile they, does. I believe I think Verizon. They don't yeah. All. Do they? Oh, Not okay. all of them. It's it's kind of weird. I know T-Mobile does Try for it. sure because I've seen that. Yeah. Try it. Um, all right. The new iPhones are here, and we'll have. I'll get mine on Friday. We'll have. I think so mm -hmm. does Micah. We'll have reviews and so forth. And as I said, I expect that Engadget and other places will have reviews. I more uh, probably around Wednesday. That's usually when the embargo goes off. Does Renee have one, Georgia? I don't know. Yeah, you do. No, no clue. I don't know. He doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't. He's he doesn't like that good. He doesn't tell me anything. He's Where'd that good. He just, he just goes dark. I can't tell yeah. you what I'm doing right now. <laughs> no, he knows not to. I've gone dark. <laughs> he's too busy doing videos constantly. I know. The poor guy works. I have to now make an appointment to see off. him. So. He was at the event. We'll have him on Tuesday on MacBreak Weekly. We'll talk uh, about the event and what he saw. How's the camera bump, Devendra? You saw it, right? Is the camera bump? I've seen it. Terrible? It. It's weird. I think it, it's a little more. I got to look at the like 10s Max I have. I think it sticks out a little more. Yeah. Um. It's a little. Yeah. It's, it's like it's a weird. double like bump. A, yeah. Yeah. It's it's really it's funky looking. I don't mind it too much. Um. But if, you know, if, people who complain about those things, it's going to be there. It's, uh, the new Pixel Four leaks we've been seeing looks like that same thing. That camera square. Yep. Looks less protruding. Like it sticks out a lot less. So okay. That's going to be one rather, thing. Andrew to talk about. If the phone mm -hmm. was thicker so that there was not a camera bump, or do you think the camera bump is the best way to go about it? I don't mind thicker phones. Thicker phones mean more battery life. Right. So, yeah. And then it just make it flat. a little thicker. Yeah, because yeah. that's the real issue the is lying flat on, it, it on the goes, table. Tick, 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 yeah. Bothers me a little bit. Yeah. And I've seen yeah. a lot of people you know, who scratch up their lenses. And if you scratch right. that lens, right. you're screwed. Like, that's, right. a, that's a big repair. So, you know how you avoid... Um, any issue with the camera bump tool is by just getting, getting the hunch case. back. Oh, oh Lord. No, oh, Look at that. No, oh, no, Lord. No, that's no, the ugliest no, case. That's still so wrong. That's <laughs> you know, when they published that book of Johnny Ives designs, that is not in it. No, that's the not. That's just sadness. Not be in that. You can, a regular case that sticks and makes it flat, then it sticks yeah. flat and you don't have yeah. to gonna, worry. That's the thing. You're going to have a case. It's going to have a recess. Prettier than the hunchback. Right. But if you're going to make it that thick anyway, why not put make a thicker phone so you get more battery? Anyway, they've solved the battery issue, it sounds like. We'll find out. We'll see. We'll see. I want to, I do want to talk about the watch because there's some clever technology in the watch. And yes, there's another thing Apple did that everybody's been asking for. But first, a word from our sponsor. We've got Devendra Hardware from Engadget here. It's always great to have you, Devendra. Uh, Happy to be here. Actually, I love this panel. Georgia Dow from iMore.com, senior editor over there. Adding some class to the panel. And Will Harris, <laughs> taking it all away again. CEO of Entail.com. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's so nice to see you. Are you going to be drinking a little, uh, little scotch during the show today? Because you have been known to have a to tipple. Have I a have, tipple. I have been known. I'm actually um, currently just discovered that in the UK now you can buy LaCroix. You're kidding. So I am now completely. I am now nice. completely addicted to LaCroix and every what flavor I can get. It's my just fizzy that? water. Why are people so excited about LaCroix? Is it LaCroix oh, or is it LaCroix? fizzy water that makes you... <laughs> LaCroix. So the, the fashion label is LaCroix, La but the drink okay. is LaCroix. LaCroix. <laughs> LaCroix. La uh, LaCroix. And the best thing is to be drinking LaCroix whilst wearing LaCroix. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Which I've not yet done, but I'm not ruling out. <laughs> uh, I wear Lacoste while I drink LaCroix. Is that okay? Our, uh, our show today brought to you by something very easy to pronounce, stamps. When you get stamps, you could go to the post office, take the time to park, get in line, do all of that, or print your own stamps at your desk with your computer and your printer. No special hardware, no special ink, nothing. I love stamps.com. We've been using it for years because we do a lot of mailing. Anybody does mailing, whether you send bills, brochures, or maybe you're an Etsy or Amazon or eBay seller and you've got to ship stuff. Stamps is so great. It makes you look more professional. You slap that stamps.com sticker on the box. No more licking stamps, trying to guess the right amount of postage. No more hand addressing the brown paper, wrapping the twine. No, you do it right with stamps.com. I love it. All the amazing services of the U.S. Post Office come to you and your computer. Never leave your desk again. Whether you're a small office sending invoices or even a warehouse sending thousands of packages a day, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. And you already have everything you need. 
Your computer will print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. Once your mail is ready, just hand it to your carrier. And with Stamps.com, you get savings you can't get at the post office. Five cents off every first-class stamp. Up to 40% off priority mail. And, and don't even think about an expensive postage meter. I mean, that's crazy. This saves you a ton of money and a lot of time. No wonder 700,000 small businesses use Stamps.com. We do. We have for years. Anybody's doing mailing. I love it because when I need stamps, I go to Debbie and I say, print me some stamps. And, I, and she even could put my picture on them, which <laughs> really confuses people. I try to wear a white periwig and ruffled shirt, so at least it looks like a president. Right now, you can enjoy the Stamps.com service with a special offer that includes a four-week free trial plus postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitment. But don't just go to the front page. Do me a favor. See that microphone in the upper right? Click that. You're going to be amazed at what happens. Type in TWIT, T-W-I-T. And then that offer on the front page goes boom, bam, wow. Plus you get a free uh, USB scale, which is really nice. You always have exactly the right postage. So remember now, go to stamps.com, click the microphone in the upper right-hand corner, enter TWIT for an amazing free trial of the best the best way to do postage, stamps.com. We're big fans. So, the Series 3 price, they killed the Series 4 watch. They dropped the price in the Series 3 to $199. I think my theory is that the Series 5 isn't that different from the Series 4. So, they, yeah. they, they wanted to kind of, you know, have a bigger jump from the base model to the higher end model. They did do something, though, that everybody wants. It's actually a watch now. I'm so excited. <laughs> it stays on. What? I'm overly excited. It was the only thing I've always been asking for every single year. Uh, I was sure I wasn't going to get it. And when it came out, I was like dancing. Yeah. I was shaking it up. Because the was Fitbit so does excited. it. Android Wear does it. Everything does it. Yeah, I, I've been dying for it. I want I want the watch. I love my Apple Watch. I hate having to do this stupid flick thing and oh, I'm I tapping know. and I'm getting angry. No, well, I am so done with that. I'm the most excited, not the phone. It's all watch all the time for me. Also, you're it, a therapist. It changed everything. The last thing yes. you want to do in a session oh, is, is, is go 100%. like... Oh, yes. man. oh, time's up. It's so, it, this, this doesn't, it, there's no way. There is no way. I have two clocks in my room. Right. But I always, I've watch. noticed this, by the way. Therapists, at least my therapist, cleverly station a, wa a clock behind your head. So that it looks <laughs> like they're I looking one? at you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> while they're, meanwhile, they're watching the clock. Uh, well, we have one so the, for us I, to make sure we time set. It, it's to make sure we time the pace of the session properly. It's not just to throw oh. you out. <laughs> <laughs> and I've won for my, my people so they can also time what they oh, say. And it's not like, you know, you 35 thoughtful. minutes has gone by and we haven't said anything. But you know what? Sometimes it's just nice to have it there. It's always on and I don't have to flick, tick, do anything. No, it's no, a no. watch. Finally, Apple Watch uh, is a watch. Hallelujah. I'm just really, really excited that's it. Nothing else mattered. To Wait, me. <laughs> Truly. I'm glad I brought this up. I have to say Sorry. that over a uh, over the course of a few years of wearing the Apple Watch, like every day to work, to meetings, many of which um, can be very boring, you do get very good at the kind of nonchalant kind of stretch <laughs> where you're sort of yeah. twisting your hand at the same time. Yeah, I'm totally listening to what you're saying. I'm just doing a little kind of a little wriggle. Just to find out what's going on. It's really nice not to have to do that anymore. It's yeah, I, li I like that move, though. The way that you did that, Will, was pretty yeah, it was inventive. That, he I, learned that I from I his youth when he had to put his arm around yeah. a girl in the theater. I'm going to just... Putting his arm around a girl and looking at the time, it's probably not a great <laughs> sign for the date. No, that's true. <laughs> You put your arm around her, then look at your watch. She can't tell what no, you're doing. The yeah. you should, hopefully you don't care what the time is no. because it's so fabulous. Yes. That's when you want to escape. Guys, let's, let's, let's get off my dating immediately. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, you know, it, we owe it all to the lower tier project office. No, no, LTPO stands for, actually, when I go to this Army site, 
for LTPO. <laughs> Warning, potential security risk ahead. This is Army.mil. And Google's saying, don't go there. Whatever you do. Okay. Sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. It's low temperature polycrystalline oxide. That's what makes it possible. And the reason it works is because... I'm sorry, I wasn't talking to you, Google. It's because <laughs> it's, uh, it could, it's a variable refresh rate OLED screen, which means it can go from the full refresh rate of 60 hertz down all the way to one. One refresh per second. Nice. What a great idea, right? Uh, that's You don't need to refresh more often than that with a watch face, right? Every second. No, I don't care. Yeah. You won't get that smooth sweep second hand, but that's fine. Who cares? I don't, who, who's looking <laughs> at the second hand? No one wants cares about the second hand. Are you okay? I'm, every well, second I'm why. No, there's something aesthetic about a sweep second hand. I just kind of like it. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. I usually smooth. turn it off. I'm usually on analog. I don't want to have to think while I'm figuring out the time. And I'm dyslexic, so I do actually have to think if I, I know. It's Wait a minute, sad, you want a pie true. face or you want a digital face? I, I like a digital, like, you know, you like no, the numbers. I, like, I like to see the analog number. I, I want to see numbers so I don't have to think. Yeah, I want yeah, a yeah, quick, yeah. easy. Well, because otherwise what do I you, have? you have that. You have that thing of any time someone asks you the time and you look at your watch and you're like, you're trying to remember, like, it happens inevitably. Yes. Like, you're trying to yeah. remember what, how to read the a watch. big hand, you, what you don't like, want to do. Five? I don't know what they is do in the four? UK, but do they five? teach it this way? <laughs> the big hand is on the three. And the little hand is uh, in between yeah. the three and the four. Do they teach it that way in the UK? They, they, they do, but it, no, when a stranger asks you for the it's first hard. time, yeah. you're so it's hard to figure this, out. You, you forget the whole thing, right? My kids, so I, I always have the numbers. My kids did not know how to tell time from a pie face. I don't think I, th I think young people no longer even know what that looks like. It's all it looks digital. Like the seconds that, teaches... that it takes you to calculate. You want to get the time over with so you can go on with your day <laughs> faster. Yeah. It's three fifty-two. So... But I'm going to make a case because I'm an old man for the pie face. It really? gives you a sense of progress of where you stand in the hour and where you stand in the day. There is, there is a sense of, uh, you know, like uh, distance. Uh, digital. Yeah. You have to kind of. I don't know. I'm just. This is a number. Uh, so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna counteract to you with the, with what is by far the best Apple Watch face, which is the the time in numbers. Yeah. Yes. And your your next calendar item underneath. Yes. It. Yes. And then you oh, know it's called exactly info. What you're doing. That's the, that's the info that's my face. Favorite one as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love. I Will is 100 percent right. He's. I'm sorry, Leo. That's how I you like measure that. your day. Is your calendar. Yeah. yeah. Andrew too. Hey, there we go. All three of yep. us. I have the calendar, I have what I have to do next, and I have the date. What else do I need to know? My day is set, and I will always see this. <gasps> Get off my lawn. <laughs> I also use a, a fountain pen and write in cursive. So. That's cool, though. Fountain pens <laughs> so you are send your awesome. Emails. No. It takes a while. It's And then I take yeah. a picture of it, and I paste it into the email, and, <laughs> and I send it send to you. Then you send it. You. Yeah. Digitally. Actually, oh man, I used to I used to support people in IT who would have their secretaries print out their emails so that they could read them. Oh, like, that's can a you thing. believe that? that? Was a thing. Yeah. So Will Hurst. I'm, I'm not surprised. Will Hurst told me habits. he does that. Uh, yeah. he, he was the former editor in chief of the San Francisco Examiner. He would have his emails printed, and I think that was it was almost a CEO move. Like, well, I'm sorry, yeah. but I yeah. I don't. Oh, it was a it's a total CEO move. I've yeah. seen um, very senior people who will print yeah. something off, um, scribble a note on it, and yes. hand it back to the secretary, yes. and then be yeah. like, "This is this is my comment." Yes. <laughs> the, um, now, the the be the better way of achieving the same thing was <laughs> it was a trick I, I learned off um, uh, off Kevin Rose about ten years ago. Yeah. Who I'm sure I don't think he'll mind if I out him. Who said that nobody minds getting like quick replies if they know they've come from your phone? Yeah. So he just set his uh, desktop uh, signature to always say sent from my iPhone. Oh, and then good he trick. Just block I like it. One word replies and nobody would care. Oh, that's and brilliant. and no one care. Typos, you know, sentences yeah, that are yeah, short yeah, yeah, yeah. takes you long. Just, that's very and, smart. And to this day, that's what I that's that's how I do it. There used to be, and I guess these don't exist anymore. There used to be sites, two sentences, dot .es, because so it's Spain, three sentences, four sentences. And it was a site where it said, I only put four sentences in my email. So this is all you're going to get. And you would put that as your signature blog. I think Kevin <laughs> told me about that, too. I think Kevin was really big into not answering email. <laughs> Come to it think of it. It saves you time. I understand yeah. it. You yeah. probably got a lot of emails, and it saves time. Yeah, I just ignore Honestly. it. Honestly.
We're all just trying to avoid emails. Like I that's just also it. why they print out the emails. Yeah. I have, mm -hmm. I have created a mythology around me that I don't read email, which has been very <laughs> helpful for me for years. I do read email, but I don't want anybody to yeah. know it. Right. Speaking right. of saving time, ceramic is back in the series five. <laughs> now, okay. What so an amazing segue. There's, there's four. Count them. Four <laughs> materials. You got your cheap aluminum. Come on, man. You got your probably surgical stainless steel. That's heavy, by the way. That's the heaviest, I think. You got your titanium. That's a little lighter, heavier than aluminum. Or as you fellas over there say, aluminium. But lighter than stainless steel. And then ceramic. Is that how you say it? Ceramic. Ceramic. <laughs> ceramic. Ceramic. Aluminium or ceramic. I believe it's ceramic. Anyway... <laughs> But the ceramic is I white. You wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's white yeah. and the titanium comes in two colors. I got okay, I I almost hate to admit this cuz it's kind of a one percenter move. I got the titanium with the link, which is like a $400 band, which is crazy. Get to stop you, Leo. But I just thought Come it would on. look nice. <laughs> it's so no, stupid. You know the real you know the real the real one percent to move, Leo, which I have admit that I have done, um, is you buy both the stainless steel, like steel, <laughs> and the stainless steel gold, so it matches whatever accessories you're oh, wearing. Oh, I know. Yeah, oh, okay. Wow. Now that's a little. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a that's, that was a Condé Nast move. Have that's not very Condé. That yeah. Oh Condé Nast. boy. Yeah, that's very Condé. I have heard stories of people having day and night watches to like. <laughs> that was when wow. the battery life didn't serve. Right. You yeah. couldn't. You couldn't get yeah. through the day. So uh, three ninety nine starting price for the alum aluminium, and it goes up. I think it's like a thousand bucks again for the edition versions. Yeah, yeah, those are expensive. Yeah, although the, the the first edition, as in the first edition editions, were like ten k, right? Oh no, twenty. Were, uh, the gold, the twenty four <laughs> karat gold. Yeah, they was like eighteen thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So it's like a thousand of the ceramic white looks like a positive bargain, right? Sure, why not? I realized what a stupid move it is when they started. I thought, oh, well, they won't come out with another one next year. And they do. So I realized yeah. you should just get the cheapest <laughs> possible one you can get. Yes, there's definitely no shame. No shame at all. Get the cheapest. I'm piece. ashamed. Especially, when Especially with you, you're going to buy the, the next watch. Yeah, I'm ashamed. I'm, I'm so buy the cheap you know. watch get the nice link like that's the thing get, yes, get, get your the nice band. Band. no one can like tell the, the difference watch. between titanium the brushed, and aluminum the brushed yeah. titanium and the aluminum Look does the not same. show any difference no. you really they're a little different but, but i'll know i don't know me know. they look the same i i don't know course, maybe in person they look know. a little bit more different but i wouldn't know the difference I'll know. so they'll just think you bought the cheap watch <laughs> anyways and you didn't all right so everybody's kind of a Go ahead. I feel like it's a smart move just because Apple is catering to the to the high end yeah. watch fanatic. It's who yeah. that's yeah. that's what they pay for. So BS. Apple's just like, oh, yeah. we're just going to yeah. charge this every year. They're going to keep a, buying it. Who's yeah? You know, we're a winning. Fashion, it's yeah. a fashion project. Who needs you know? Who needs ten different Rolexes that have got a slightly different color of submariner blue? Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, you have them because you because you want them, right? Okay, real so quick because we've that, <laughs> we've so we've so worn out our welcome with this Apple talk. I just want to go through a couple more things. <laughs> uh, I was excited. Apple Arcade five bucks a month starts this Thursday. Yeah, I think that's good. I think five bucks Amazing a month pricing. for a hundred yeah. games, all new, no in, no microtransactions, all downloadable. You can play them on the airplane. That Most seems, all exclusive, like half yeah. of them are also exclusive to the service entirely, and all of them are exclusive to iOS in some form. So that's pretty impressive. You yeah. had me at Frogger. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> they showed Frogger, but there's a giant baby now, so it's better. <laughs> yeah, that's perhaps the low point of that whole demo. It's like, oh, man, we're talking about next generation arcade streaming and this really scripted, really stilted demo of Frogger Who's appears. And, and then uh, yeah. Frogger. Then Frogger. <laughs> With a giant baby. Uh, no, I, th I think this is going to be a good one for Apple. I think they're going to do well with that. Don't you? I'm yeah. excited yeah. about it. I'm, I'm one of those people that, that I game a lot on my, you know, I DVR yeah. and then I use my phone. That's pretty much the way that I game. Yeah. So... And then it's, Apple it's, TV Plus, Apple showed how un, how less confident it is about Apple TV Plus, announcing first that it's four ninety nine a month, which is lower than any of the other subscription services. Because it has less content. Than it only has six shows. shows. Three shows. Yeah. It's like nothing no to watch. I don't understand but then, how you can pay yeah. Yeah. 
As if that weren't enough. Show. And they said, but if you buy anything, it's free. Yeah. That's the baller <laughs> move. That's, good. Free that's is it. good. Yeah. <laughs> if you buy anything, just buy but something, we'll give it How to you. They, you can't you can't charge anything no, for can't. six shows. How can you charge the chances of you liking any of the six shows is infinitesimal. Yeah. You have and big names that does not mean the great. shows would be great. You can yeah. even yeah. buy an iPod Touch and you'd get it free for a year. That's, <laughs> that's how little confidence they have. I'd in be this. excited if you bought like an Apple t shirt and you got it for that free would be as well. Anything. <laughs> buy a watch no. band. It's free. Yeah, I will say that, that Leo, like I don't think it's just a sign. free for the first year. It should just be free. Yeah. It's yeah, not a sign of lack of confidence. It. Like they are bulldozing their way into this market in the best way, like in the way they know how. So for to for them to get any dent, they need to get as many subscribers as they can in their first year, and yeah. this is the way to do it. Just make it the default. But don't you, yeah. Don't you think, Davinci, that if they had just made it free, free, like everyone gets it, we we're mm -hmm. in, we like it, and then you start to make it, like then we subscribe to it afterwards when they have a little I bit like, more than six. Yeah. I don't know. If you start, if you start with free as we, as you're offering, and then you start charging, then people freak out, and then people get annoyed. If it's like it's free for this year, if you buy right. this thing, then you know the deal. You know what you're getting into, so I feel uh, that feels at least a little more honest and transparent about also, what's happening. It also plays into Apple's like whole service pricing offering anyway. Like the pricing of iCloud for like something that's so outdated God. is like completely yeah. ludicrous. And it's like I'm paying you know ten bucks a month or something for some storage. You don't even know how much you get or why you get yeah. it or yeah. where it is on the phone. It, like it, I just hope my service backups are good just all over the place. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah exactly. Um, and I don't know why that isn't rolled in. Why is that the TV service not part of, like, just my Apple service? I feel like there should be right? a larger bundle, and I think there might be a larger bundle that's everything because you've got Apple yeah. News Plus for ten bucks, way overpriced. You've got uh, <laughs> iCloud way for whatever. No one knows way overpriced. <laughs> Definitely that much. You've got uh, Apple Music. That's something worthwhile. Maybe what's that? Fifteen ninety nine for a family. Uh, ten bucks for uh, individual. What if you said twenty five bucks, you get everything, something like that? Yeah, Apple yeah. Ultimate. Like uh, Apple Microsoft Ultimate. is yeah. doing that with the Xbox Live plan and Game Pass, right? And uh. really selling that as the ultimate thing, and that's that's great. That kind of works, I think. So, I wouldn't be surprised if we see that next year. Like, if there's so much Microsoft stuff for them Game Pass is a si is a system seller, man. That is such yeah. an yeah. incredible yeah. value. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's kind. Of, I guess what Apple wants to do with Arcade Plus. If you're mm -hmm. not in the Apple ecosystem, if you're one of those people sitting at home saying, why are they talking huh. about Apple all this time? Does Apple TV Plus have any draw for you at all? No. I don't think TV Plus does, but I think Apple Arcade does. Like 100 titles, a lot of them sound really compelling. Um, yeah, just just looking at them on paper, these are games I want to play, and I don't normally want to like devote time to mobile games, but they actually have really interesting developers and really cool artists involved with this whole service, and I think that's really interesting. So people would jump on board for that. This one's kind of for you, Devendra, because you covered this with Slash Film, your uh, podcast about film. Apparently, uh, according to The Hollywood Reporter, Apple offered J.J. Abrams half, almost half a billion dollars to for a production deal with Bad Robot, which he turned down, and ended up going with AT and T's Warner Media for less. Wow, a five year deal for for two hundred fifty million, but the sources said it was Apple's offer was almost twice as much. That show that's a problem for Apple if they can't woo these guys, um, for whatever reason, and I don't know if it's a content issue, uh, if it's. I a, think it was an yeah. exclusivity mm -hmm. issue. They didn't want. He didn't want the exclusive. He yeah. wouldn't have been allowed to work on a, a Star Wars or Star Trek or other TV yeah. projects. So, but you're paying yeah, a lot for that exclusivity. I'd I'd be exclusive for half a billion. But he has enough money <laughs> so that he doesn't care. Mm, he wants to have yeah, his, like creative freedom. He like really money is not yeah. probably his biggest issue. And in fact, I it's surprising that, that Apple but, made yeah. that offer. Like that shows perhaps a little naivete about how Hollywood works, that they would say, okay, JJ, uh -huh. but we want you and you alone. It's very much Silicon Valley coming in, like, here's here's money. Here's a ton yeah. of money. 
uh, forget your artistic yeah. ambitions or your creativity. Like, mm-hmm. just just take the money. Just take the money. Come work for us. <laughs> live in our kingdom. Well, you know? and then yeah, JJ has got rough. this great relationship with 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 Disney, right? Like producing the Star Wars films. You've got to imagine he's yeah. going to have some Star Wars involvement going forward. And we already saw this week Bob Iger resign from the board of Apple, right, because of a conflict of interest over Apple TV Plus and and Disney Plus. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm you've got sure to think there's Disney, some issue there. Yeah, I'm sure there's something going on too with Disney, like trying to keep him around or available. So. There's a lot. Um, also, I think these stories reported like he could potentially be getting more money from AT and T as well, like uh, through other types of deals or other other financial incentives. So it's not just the cash that he's probably looking at. Uh, there no, are in fact, potential issues. The Hollywood yeah. Reporter says Bad Robots going to develop not only film and TV but video games and digital products because, of course, Warner includes HBO, the new HBO Max service. I mean, if you're a creator. Yeah, that's a much better. Even if the dollars are less, that's a much better long-term offer. Mm-hmm. So I can kind of understand that. And he's working with Apple. He's doing uh, three shows at Apple, but they're but through Warner. So. Yeah. And also, like there may be some content restrictions too. Like I don't think Apple's doing. That's what I was wondering. Adult. Yeah. yeah. Like they, it all seems like kind of family oriented. No Why swearing. No those? swearing. Yeah. That's and from I can Satan. See that if you wanna- you, you want to be creative and be able to, you know, produce whatever you feel like right. you want to produce. I think that that mm-hmm. at his stage in his career is probably not very appealing. Remember, do you remember the word convergence? For, <laughs> ten, for 10 years, yeah, that was the whole thing. And I know you do, Will, was the convergence of Hollywood and Silicon Valley. It's going to be an amazing match made in heaven and it has never really worked. It's never really come off, has it? It's two very different cultures. It's because, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, the cultures are completely different. You know, Silicon Valley, I, when I was running Channel Flip, we used to run this all the time, right? Which is that people at YouTube are driven by algorithms and the creators that make stuff are driven by creativity. And it's like people talking two completely different languages yeah. and they just they just don't get it. And I don't think they, you know, there is just nothing that will overcome that, that clash. Seems like it's still a problem. Let's take a little break. Now we'll move off from Apple. We've got lots of other things to talk about, including all 50 states and Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico going after Google. Uh, But first, a word from our sponsor, Rocket Mortgage. When it's time to buy a house, that's the biggest purchase you will ever make. The biggest check you'll ever write. It's important to have somebody by your side that can be a team member. That's Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Finding the right house, that's hard. Finding the right mortgage is as easy as going to rocketmortgage.com slash twit2. Rocket Mortgage is doing more to help you understand the home buying process so you can get what you need. It's not just any old mortgage. It's your mortgage. So get the team. Get the, the right team behind you. Rocket Mortgage's team of mortgage experts are obsessed with finding a better way. Their number one goal to make the home buying process smoother for you award-winning client service and support every step of the way, industry-leading online lending technology. We know you're geeks. We know you like that. Millions of Americans now have used Rocket Mortgage to achieve their dream of home ownership. In fact, Rocket Mortgage does so well, they have been ranked highest in customer satisfaction by J.D. Power for primary mortgage origination. That's nine years in a row. Highest in mortgage servicing, six years in a row. Nice job. For J.D. Power Award information, visit jdpower.com. When you work with Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans, you get more than just a loan because they're more than just a lender. Find out more. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash twit2. Take the first step toward the home of your dreams. Get started online today at rocketmortgage.com slash twit2. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states at mlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Push button. Get mortgage. I like that. Thank you, Rocket Mortgage. It's nice to have you back in the fam. This is as bad as it can get. And we heard this was going to happen, but it, it, it came down. Only California and Alabama are not in this. 50 U.S. states and territories announced a broad antitrust investigation of Google. The pile-on continues. Um, but the toughest thing is it seems to be their different constituencies texas attorney general ken paxton says you know they're worried about google's left-leaning slant (laughs) 
Uh, they're focused on online advertising and censorship. They dominate the buyer side, the seller side, the auction side, the video side with YouTube. Uh, some are worried about monopoly. Some are, it's, it's a complicated thing and it's an interesting coalition. How worried should Google be? How about we start with you, Will, from across the pond? Because the EU has also been pretty critical of Google, another big uh, EU fine. Yeah, I think the the answer is probably not that worried. I mean, if you've got 50, 50 U.S. states and territories, the chances of coordination between a bunch of people who are, you know, yep. going to be fundamentally politically unaligned. As you say, there are people in Texas who want to go after it for left leaning bias, people on the left who want to go after it for being a monopoly that's, right. you know, that's, that's a capitalist disaster. Like, you're not going to get anybody to agree on anything. And I think if you, so at the state level, I think, you know, from, from, you know, my rudimentary understanding of American politics is going to be a disaster. And then if you look at the federal level, look at what the, you know, the kind of level of fine that Facebook has been getting for stuff that arguably is far more egregious and the completely free pass it's getting on, you know, electioneering. I don't think there's, there's, you know, there's any hope that there's going to be any regulation or any kind of penalty that's going to incite a meaningful change in behavior in, in these people Whilst they're, whilst they're making so much money doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does feel like uh, Facebook's kind of no longer in the spotlight. The, the, the eye of Sauron has turned to Google and Amazon all of a sudden. There are still investigations being like, uh, I think, uh, who's it? New York Attorney General? Yeah. Letitia James, yeah, is, is still pursuing something against Facebook. So it's like everything is being looked at now. But the key is like Google and Facebook are now both under fire. I don't know if this like this seems so haphazard, like 50 different states and a lot of different things like there, there are too many ideas and there are too many uh, people pursuing different angles for any of this to really have much of an effect. But I like seeing the, gov the state governments and the federal government paying more attention to these companies. They just need a more a smarter and more concerted effort and way to like actually uh, hold them account for when things go wrong. I'm surprised. Yeah. Also, you don't have a lot of conf you don't have a lot of confidence that the lawmakers really understand nope. the detail of what they're really going for. Right? Like it feels a little bit like the internet is made of tubes all over again. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and and I actually worry uh, uh, because I f I feel like any move to break up uh, Google would only lead to disaster. I mean, disaster? I don't. I don't. De I don't uh, deny that. I look at Google. I look at YouTube right now, and I see disaster. Like honestly, like mm -hmm. it should, depends on how you. Should they be forced to divest YouTube? Is that is that the kind of thing you think? Um, would work? if I if I was if I was a uh, a, a stock buying man, the you know I would be investing heavily right now in in Google in Facebook because if you break in Amazon if you break those you companies just make up, more money. Yeah. If you you like you unlock. Mm, Massive shareholder value. You break AWS out from Amazon, and you're going to have, you know, so, you know, an absolute giant. You break YouTube off from Google, you're going to have an absolute massive creation of shareholder value. If anything, the fact that you know these investigations are ongoing should be assigned to, to. I mean, uh, no investment analyst, hold my hands up, but like, you know, I would be buy, buy, buy. <laughs> I I don't think that anyone has to worry right now because they're they're deciding to, they're opting to not put any you know major penalties up for them. So that's pretty much going to become a, a slap on the wrist. I think that what Google's really worried about is that they're going to put regulations order, which probably in the end is that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So it's happening in the EU. Inter Interesting. It's, it's going to happen. It's just going to happen in a certain amount of time yeah. when people understand a little bit more about the Internet and they become lawmakers. But even with the U EU issuing like, you know, like nine billion in fines for Google, that's a slap on the wrist. It's that's nothing. like they make 40 billion a year. Yeah. This is like three months of change for them. So it's even that is nothing to them. Regulations they will care about. And if anyone has to go to jail for anything that they will care about. But until oh, that yes. happens. Google, yeah, and I, I'll be honest, that's my feeling to it is that, you know, you mess with people's privacy, you try to, you know, mess in um, elections, that should be something that is a crime. You want Mark but Zuckerberg to go to jail? 
<laughs> yeah. One legislator not, yes. actually. How many reasons? There. Yeah. How's that? Yes. I think he should go to jail. Wow. He's doing this for sure. Yeah. I think, but yeah. again, it has to be made a crime before he goes to jail. But I think it <laughs> yeah. should be a criminal offense to mess with elections um, in it because mm-hmm. that ruins a democracy. I don't think that mm-hmm. anyone's feeling that Zuck is is doing this, you know, for for anything but for profit. And right, I think right. that that's Here's legal. an interesting point of view from- you tampered with a machine, oh, sorry. But if you tampered with a machine, you got caught tampering with an election you'd machine- You'd go to jail. Physically, you'd go to jail. Yeah, right. So yeah. digitally should be no difference But wait a minute, he you didn't He didn't say, he, oh, I'm going to mess with the election with results. He just created a platform that allowed it to happen. Yeah. There. And look the but other again, way as he made a ton of money. If you know yeah. about it happening, you know about a crime that is happening. Yeah. Or if your yeah. company is the one that's propagating- a crime that is happening. Again, that should be a criminal offense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, yes, look at look at the feel. Cambridge Analytica story. Like we know they knew for a very long yeah. time. Like there, there's a lot yeah. of this where they they were responsible for this platform and did nothing and kind of let mm-hmm. things continue as they were as they were going. So I think there should be some way to stop that or at least punish them and for I, allowing something like I, that. Yeah. It's the only thing that'll stop them from doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to bring it back to the EU point, right? Yeah. You know, it makes uh, the EU action of like making Microsoft unbundle Internet Explorer. <laughs> like, doesn't that seem so quaint? Oh, like, the good old days. Things, like, the biggest threat to like the entire ecosystem was it putting only Internet took 15 Explorer years. on the desktop. Yeah. Well, but I think that's a, oh, a, an interesting God. case because it, it turned out all of the storm and fury around prosecuting Microsoft for antitrust. Not much happened. And in fact, Microsoft yeah. didn't continue to win. So it didn't really matter, right? I mean, that was a way. That, don't you think that Microsoft prosecution by the DOJ and the EU was wasted time in the long run? Perhaps, perhaps. But I wonder how much of that kind of led to Microsoft not dominating as much. Do you much think so? Do you think it was successful in that sense that, that it is? We don't know. Yeah. yeah we, we don't, don't know. know. It, it, it kind of stopped their momentum. It is we funny need, that we're talking about. I feel about- like the tech world moved on and yes, Microsoft's. Yeah position as the dominant player in desktop operating yeah. systems didn't matter in a cloud yeah. environment and it had That's nothing what, yeah. to do with the eu or yeah. the what it, well, what, the, the, what it did was was create a huge um overhead at a time when you know microsoft should have been focusing on innovating in mobile innovating yeah, in internet wasted space. Their time and what it was actually doing defending. was spending all its time yeah. like with lawyers in court right it was opportunity cost that they missed yeah that's interesting yeah. It is funny that uh, Microsoft President Brad Smith is doing his book tour right yeah. now, like he's everywhere, and yeah. he's talking about like yeah, regulating big tech and breaking up big tech, and it's it's funny. It is funny how yeah, uh, the tables have turned a yeah. little, just a little. That seems to be the defensive Every, posture. When they're out of right. That seems to be the defensive posture of Silicon Valley is like, <laughs> spank us, please. <laughs> <laughs> Don't throw me in jail, but spank us. Is that what's yeah. going on? What's going on? Well, Every. But- I mean, everybody but Mark Zuckerberg is saying, yeah, we're bad. We're wrong. But we can't we have to say that, listen, we if we've learned anything from from World War Two, appeasement does not work. We at least <laughs> have to look like we are Wait trying to. Are you saying Mark Zuckerberg is Hitler? I mean, is that where no, you No, I'm not saying he's okay. Hitler. I'm saying that we've learned that appeasing by saying, you know what, we're just going to look the other way. Please, please try yeah. not to do that. And. If you do it again, please stop again. No, that's right. That's give them an inch, they'll take a effective. mile. And if you don't stop them, they'll keep going. So we need to have, at least if you're trying to go against it, at least if they have a little bit of a thought of, oh, this is illegal mm-hmm. and there's going to be a consequence. Because let's say it, if mm-hmm. people didn't stop us at stop signs, no one would go through it. Like I would roll mm-hmm. through every single stop sign. I'll just be honest here. If <laughs> sure, I didn't have to read it, <laughs> um, if a cop wasn't going to stop me, I, mean, I was going to get a ticket. It it, we have to have something in place and until the entire political system kind of gets with the technology yeah. and mm-hmm. understands it enough to make regulations that matter and criminal offenses where criminal offenses would make sense. Yeah. You know, we have to start yeah, somewhere. Yeah, but you, you, you have to compare it. I think the, the closest thing to, to, to what we're seeing now is like, um, you know, the unraveling of, of the financial system in 2008 and how many people went to jail over that, right? You know, none of the CEOs of, of those companies right. uh, yeah. went anywhere. And it's it's really yeah. hard to imagine anything, uh, you know, any different template for action yeah. Yeah. Um, that it's, would it's result like, in it, you know. Yeah, we need a fundamental restructuring of the way we think of business and the way we think of our economy. Like that's, 
this is a problem endemic to America. And I think the big thing is mm-hmm. like the tech companies just did the best job of milking as much capital as they could out of this entire system and algorithms helped and everything helped. And it didn't matter if there was potential like issues along the way or human costs, uh, because at the end of the day, all that mattered was like, yeah, following the algorithm and getting as much profit as possible. Interesting opinion piece this week in the New York Times by uh, journalist Rob Walker, who points out that we can all, you know, scream about tech. He says there's really no tech backlash, mm-hmm. uh, according to, you know, I mean, yeah, the F- FTC fined Facebook five billion, but at the same time, the number of Facebook accounts <laughs> increased by eight percent over the prior quarter. <laughs> Uh, the company's app added a million new users every day in the United States. Revenue was up 28%. Even with the fine, Facebook recorded a profit of record profit of $2.6 billion. And he's saying, we may know about this. We may say there's a problem, but it's not slowing us, our use of Google and Facebook and Amazon mm-hmm. down by one whit. We talk a lot about privacy and smart speakers. Amazon has sold more than 100 million Echoes. No, it's, mm-hmm. yep. you know? Yep. Uh, so do we really care? Well, well I think well, it's, it's an echo of the old, um, you know, when it comes to, to music, right? When everyone was saying, oh, you know, we're, it's sad that we're moving to this, you know, terribly lossy MP3 format. And the adage was convenience trumps fidelity. And I think in today's internet age, like convenience is going to trump privacy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. And, and I mean, there are plenty of things, too. Like we talk about within tech circles, we talk about these ideas like privacy and kind of what's going on at these companies. But I'm I'm amazed at how like typical users, mainstream users don't hear about much of this stuff. And mm-hmm. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Exactly. Like I, I li- I'm surrounded by the media bubble. So I think like everyone thinks like I think and I should probably mm-hmm. realize that's not the case. Uh, mm-hmm. I remember I was doing um, shortly after after uh, the election. I was holding some 1984 readings here uh, at the Brooklyn Public Library, and we had oh, a great group cool. of people. That's cool. It was cool. It was a great discussion because we were like, oh, man, what it, what are we approaching here? Right. And I talked to – it was a great group of people, like smart, funny, thoughtful people who read the news. And I was like, well, you know, this is really similar to, um, you know, the thing Snowden revealed and the, you know, global surveillance network that he kind of unearthed that our governments are portraying or perpetuating – and they didn't mm-hmm. know anything about it. They oh, didn't really? hear about this story. But I do and these think are people, people who read the news. I do it's think crazy. people think that there are. I think they generally are aware of privacy invasions and are a little nervous about voice assistance. Sure. I think there's a general sense of it. You know, the the, the difference is in 1984, Winston's TV was watching him, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which and and, and our he, smart speakers are listening to. We us. We are yeah. being listened to and watched all the time. But what's different is not for the government; it's for commercial entities. So yeah. that they and can advertise it. And we want it. Yeah. We're yeah. the ones putting these these smart speakers in our phone to eavesdrop upon us happily, mm. yes. complacently. But I think that Devendra's point of how like mainstream people don't are, you know, really knowledgeable about what's happening. It should be taught at the school and and to children so that they understand what they are, you know, that you're the product if you're not paying for something. Um, how Google works, what you put out there and it's something but you that are paying we, and and people are making a semi-conscious choice to use it i i know google's got a lot of information about me but as a result I, I, my google assistant is smart you know i just installed the google home uh, nest home hub max god these names are just oh out boy of it has a camera yep and when i walk in front of it it says hi leo <laughs> Isn't that creepy? It knows me. I'm well, I, and by the way, it asks creepy? you. It asks you when you set it up. Is that okay? And I said yes. And it says, "Here's your schedule." It sees me. It recognizes me. It says, "Here's your schedule. Here's some stuff you'd be interested in." I think that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with you on so that. Does I think. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. So of course Google does because they can show me ads. But so what? It's not like they're gonna. But it's not break down the doors that. in my house and arrest me. It's not a government. No, not yet, but that that's not happened. Yet. But this isn't about ads, right? Like this is about your like 
there's very little transparency of what they do with the information, how much information that they take and, and where it's being used. So yes. yeah, that's, it's wonderful. I would love to have a digital assistant that was intelligent, but would I trade my privacy and, you know, do I trust Google to be able to have that information? I want to cut Google as far out of my life as yeah. is possible, even if I'm using a, you know, sad duck, duck, go um, browser system <laughs> instead a little sad. It's getting better. It's getting better. It's sad. Well, yeah, I admit, yeah. I bought the Facebook portal, and I did not leave that in the house. Oh, Leo. Oh, Leo. We, we <laughs> talked about this. <laughs> it was like a month after all the Facebook leaks. Yeah, no, like, it was a big mistake. <laughs> oh, man. But I like this Google thing. And then not only that, yeah. I could say, uh, and I did, sh yeah, I want a slideshow of all the pictures. And I said, uh, and, and knows what everybody looks like. I said, you want Lisa? Yeah. You want Michael? Yeah. You want mm -hmm. your son, Henry? Yeah. You want Abby? I checked the boxes of the people's faces with their names next to it. Yeah, show me pictures with those people. And now I have a lovely yeah. slideshow because I have given Google over 70,000 photos taken over the last 15 years. <laughs> and right, it has right, a wonderful, right. I see pictures from when the kids were really little. It's great. I, I think these features are great, and you're asking. And what for is it. Google like, that's doing that's so bad with this stuff? That well, I that's the thing. That when when uh, once we started realizing, like, oh, Amazon and other companies and Google are uh, people are actually listening to your voice clips to make this voice recognition tech of better, they are. which seems kind of obvious on the face of it, but they never admitted to that, and they never right. told us exactly that was happening. I mm -hmm. I think we should be a little skeptical. Like, what is just for it to recognize your face, like is a video clip being sent back to Google? Is somebody actually making sure, like uh, actually massaging the facial recognition? We don't know what's happening with this so data. I, and just, I think that's the bigger problem. When I got the yeah. home uh, Max Nest thing, I also got a Google Hello doorbell, <laughs> which, <laughs> which I put in oh. and it has face recognition. And it says yep. when you set it up. Uh, you should probably be aware that in some states this might be illegal, but would you like to recognize anybody who walks up to your house? And I said, yes. And you I didn't check. You your own surveillance state. Yeah, you baby. Because yeah. I, I have the right to it. know who's out there ringing my doorbell. You do. But, but it was a, this ties into uh, like the... Uh, the Amazon Ring story, like how insidious mm -hmm. uh, that had that. Well, has that's gone what I replaced. Because, <laughs> yeah, you because of the police uh, integration. Them yeah, partnering. That, with police I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, so I don't want the police to have that information. But I don't really care right. if Google does. Let's Google. Let's Google. If they, so Google they, one of the, the most asked, interesting. They'd have to give it. Um, yeah. yeah, one of the most but that's interesting why we things that I saw that people. Oh, sorry. Oh, please. I was going to say, um, just just a really um, a flippant thing was that people. Um, there's a day of action set up for, I think it's um, October the 17th, maybe. Uh, it was one of these things organized on Reddit where um, everybody has to click the wrong thing on <laughs> captures to complete. <laughs> yeah, those Google captures. Now that pisses me off. I do not want to help Google like, figure out the difference between a street a sign and a crosswalk. And, uh, yeah. No, like everything annoying. that isn't a crosswalk can completely defeat the sort of data demon. I thought that was a really <laughs> nice idea. Just sort of drawing attention to the issue. Everybody. Okay, what day is that? Because I'm doing that. Is that after we invade Area 51 that. or before? Uh, it's after Area 51 because Area 51 is my birthday. Um, so I'm really excited. <laughs> oh, about that's that. Friday. Oh, good. Be. Yeah, that's Friday. I'm uh, going to be celebrating <laughs> I'm aliens. Slightly... See y'all in Nevada. Yeah. <laughs> so my my husband wants to ask you, Leo. So what happens if you're not dressed? Is Google still like so, mm -hmm. or would you not? Do you not not care about that? Because <laughs> no, that's not creepy either. I it's don't, not I don't know penis know recognition. Answer. It's face recognition. Not I yet. Didn't. <laughs> we don't you know. Don't know. <laughs> we don't know what's you coming. You don't know what they're they're doing with that information. But that's what makes <laughs> who cares. You know, no, that's why we need regulation. I'm sorry. When yeah, Leo, when yeah. you, who are so aware, who does with security <laughs> now, and you, when you'll even say, you know what, I will take the easy route. That's yeah. why we need government mm -hmm. regulation to keep us safe because I in the end, terrified. humans are weak. Let's you just say should it. be terrified. Humans are weak. Of the government yeah. getting involved in this in any form or no, fashion. No, 
No, I'm actually. Well, no, because they don't I'm have not. access to the data. Like, I think that's the main thing. Like, here's the thing: if like if if some of this data, like some of the video footage from your Google Nest, is being looked at by a Google engineer, and the AC, like, oh hey, it's Leo Laporte. I love him. Oh, he's walking around his house naked. I'm gonna take this <laughs> clip and put it on YouTube and make this go viral, baby. I do because I'll that. be a millionaire when I sue Google for that one. <laughs> I will. I, I will say about don't Google. Don't you think I'm protected against yeah. that I kind was, of thing? In Google's favor, they are the best at telling you what mm -hmm. they are gathering. Yeah. Of all it. the companies, you can go to Google and they will say, we have this clip and this clip and this yeah, location. Yeah, you can see what they have. And all these things on you. And and they, they give you the choice of, okay, now I've seen this, maybe so here, I can Here's my front door. But the question is, the que yeah, but the question is, do you believe it? Yeah, right? that's Amazon what I was going to say. Well, for the long Oh, they're not going to lie. Why would they lie? Bit, so you think Says, they're being my camera on. hasn't seen anyone new yet. Once they do, return to the screen to categorize them. This is people yeah. my doorbell sees. And then here's a, here's a link. See who your camera already knows. Apparently doesn't know anybody. It says, familiar face detection. Use this feature in compliance with the law. De <laughs> Thanks. Don't tell me what the law is. Depending on where you live, you might need to get the consent of people visiting your home. Do I have it's to put a to sign put a up on there. my front okay. door that says your uh, face is being surveilled? You are being recognized? I probably Your do. Candid camera, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In teach your camera. It says teach your camera. It's public, right? It's a private property, so we expect yeah. privacy. Yeah, get yeah, off my so. porch. You don't like it. Teach your camera who you know. Every time it sees them, it gets better at recognizing their face or other body parts. Tap a face. To see how the camera did. And if something's not right, delete that picture from the group. So I'm training Google, aren't I? I'm saying mm -hmm. here's what here's what anybody who comes to my door, here's what they uh here's what they look like. There is is there any regulation of this? Because I am really literally helping Google identify yeah. my neighbors. A surveil yes, a surveillance state. But at least like if really you're working against kind of you. If you commit a crime <laughs> out in public, it'll be more chance that, you know. When the government takes over, yeah. you know, surveillance of public streets, you'll probably be, they'll, they'll find we you have, faster. In this studio, we I have signs we'll everywhere that say you're on camera, right? You guys had a sign-up release saying you're going to be on camera. And, mm -hmm. But the truth is, we don't have any I face recognition the, stuff aimed at you. Well, I don't know. Yeah, but one of the big questions is going to be like, what is, is, is not what Google is doing with the data. It's what the, the government is going to tell Google to do with the data True. that they're not right. going to tell you about. True. Right. Remember mm -hmm. the whole scandal, um, mm -hmm. you know, post 9-11 when, you know, the government forced all the phone companies to put, yeah. you know, logs into everything to collect all the call metadata and nobody found out about it for, for years. So what's yep. going to so happen? A Tell me the. So I just read as an example, I read an article uh, in The New Yorker this week that says, forget it. Climate change is going to happen. We're all dead. So I ordered a book. I ordered two books that to, it said, <laughs> and I, you know what? It made a strong case. Oh, great. So you ordered books yeah. on paper. Ordered, yeah, so I ordered tree. books, killed some trees. <laughs> well. On these books is written the worst case scenarios, like the sea rise, temperature rise, yeah. so that I can plan for the next 30 years where, you know, where I should live, what I should do, should I wear sunscreen, that kind of thing. And I figured that's a sensible reaction to something that I can't change. I don't know why I brought this up. There's a reason we brought this up. <laughs> we see what you're afraid of now, Leo. Uh, what you really what care you about. I want to yeah. know, what is the book for the worst case scenario uh -huh. for all this face recognition and, and like that? What is the what is the worst case that we get a dictator in the White House and then he does what with it? I think what's scary is that a lot of this stuff is happening and we can't. I, I think we're moving faster than science fiction in some ways. Oh, yeah. too. Like, For who, sure. who could have predicted like what happened with this past election? And then our response to it isn't to like say, "Hey, maybe, maybe, maybe we should do a redo. Maybe we should do something about the fact that uh, there was this weird interference. Uh, there was like, yeah, a lot of things going on at once. Uh, we don't have the mechanisms to respond to issues when they occur. So. I don't think there's a simple fix for this, but we've like talked about regulation on the show before. Am I like yeah. that little hound dog at the cafe that's burning and I'm going... Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like that, right? <laughs> this is fine. This is fine. fine. This is fine. This is I do, fine. I do think, like, I don't trust the government, like, intrinsically, but I do think, like, it's worth having something. We, we need regulations of some sort. Uh, I think we will need, like, a federal department of data or something like that because, that like, that's... Scares, that scares the hell out of me. 
Yeah, but why? What, because. what is keeping your car secure? What is keeping like everything we have to rely on in our food? Seat belts, it's not seat perfect. Seatbelts have made people safer, and that was regulated. Yeah. And, now, and now there's like I'm, the, I'm not saying I'm with Devendra on that. Like the government yeah. is always going to do the right thing, but you know, usually we vote the government in that we have chosen because of what yeah. they stand for, and hopefully that is aligned with the culture, the change, and the technology that's of the time. And when they do a good job, they save lives. And seatbelts yeah. is a great way of, of, you know, in the states that they have them, they do save lives. And airbags save lives as well. And when they make sure that cars are now safer than they ever used to be, because mm-hmm. of different regulations that are there, that can be great. I'm not saying that it can't also go sideways, yeah. but I think that in most cases, we want to trust the government officials that we have chosen to be elected to do the right and thing. Remember, the car companies fought seatbelts. They fought all these safety additions to mm-hmm. cars tooth and nail. Like they fought so mm-hmm. hard to keep seatbelts out because it's just, it's a little more cost for them, even though it's literally mm-hmm. saving people's lives. So mm-hmm. I I can I don't think we should ever just leave the really precious commodities in the hands of the people, you yeah. know, banking I off of it. I think it's really like, easy, though, to say, yeah. okay, you put, wear seatbelts and you don't go flying through the windshield. Yeah. I don't know if it's yeah. that easy to say, well, here's what you do yeah. with data collection. If well, you it's have also a data really page. hard to do yeah. anything like, like, like a lot of the pressure around, yes, there was government regulation around seatbelts, but it became socially... You know, it became a peer thing, right? You could right. see if someone wasn't wearing a seatbelt, right. and it was almost like a peer pressure thing yeah. to that took a while, to though. get you to do it. I think that it. was a long, one of long the, while. After. Yeah, yeah. One, of the, one of the challenges with with data is like because it's so intangible, we can't see you know the mm-hmm. lack of it, or we can't see where it's going. We can't see that there is a seatbelt or that there's not a seatbelt. We've got no idea what the heck is going on. Um, yep. So it's really hard to kind of to have any kind of visibility over it. Literally. Meanwhile, mm. there are people who are spending 685 pounds on an Yves Saint Laurent backpack with Google sensors built into it. This is mm. Google's Jacquard. I don't even know what this is. <laughs> well, how much is 685 pounds, Will? It's a lot of money. Like 900 bucks. Oh, that's like a thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. For a backpack. What do the sensors do? Uh, That's not that much for an Yves Saint Laurent. Uh, uh, it's uh, I don't know. It's these sensors. They're in there. Well, it probably tells you where it is, right? It's probably like GPS. No, so no, I wish it were. Back. You hover your hand over the strap to skip music, accept or dismiss calls. Uh, oh yeah, like their jean jacket. They yeah. Do that. yeah. It's a sensor. Well, it's. Oh, it's like those kind of old, like the like we get for snowboarding. Yeah, or, uh, yeah, have, on, your, have on your sleeve like in your, your hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Oh, well done. That's well that's done, just Google. local. That's there's no data collection there. I think I think that's just like a trigger. Oh well, then this is fine. Then I'm gonna get but, one. Yeah, this sort of thing is fine. But Leo, <laughs> to what you're saying, when there are issues, when there are issues, like if there's a data breach, we've seen so many companies just kind of just kind of hide it. Just kind of say, oh, we'll, yeah, we'll talk about this in a couple <laughs> months or something. And okay, the FTC but, but does thanks, its best. Thanks to GDPR, mm. now that's not the case, and really? so now it ev- doesn't, every, doesn't affect us in the U.S. Well, as much. but enough companies do business overseas that every week yeah. we hear about two or three more data breaches. Last yeah. week, which is great, four hundred million. Fo- Why is it great? What do you do about it? We, I mean, well, well first of all, you're made aware of it. It's, it's not. It's like we were saying. Like, I don't expect the consumer. I to think like what happens and, really is people yeah. just go, oh yeah, another data breach, and go on with their life. It's like where well, there's nothing you can do about it. You can't. No, I but think the, the companies point. I mean, have the whole, the whole thing. Yeah. It's not even I mean, embarrassing the for the point. companies anymore. Yeah. But the whole thing, Leo, is that you know we have GDPR regulations because there was pressure to yes. understand more about what people are doing with data. And yes, it's like, I yes, understand. And say, this is my. Okay, it's, there was a, there was a, it's the poster boy for nothing. And maybe no be. <laughs> <laughs> it's the poster no, boy. No, I mean. <laughs> No, over over here. So over here, we've had to do like. I mean, I okay. Was, now I have I to was, click every time I go um, to a site. Yes, I know you use cookies. <laughs> Whoop. Yeah, there were. There's a lot more insidious stuff that was going on, particularly with ad tech before GDPR. And you know, if you follow, um, you know, a lot of ad tech blogs, you know, the way that GDPR has impacted user data has been pretty. Um, you think it's and, been and on the, the balance? It's been good. It, it, it definitely has been good on the balance. Now, do consumers see, you know, the, the effect right. on the consumer is having to click a sodding pop-up thing every time you go onto a website. 
but it's behind the bad scenes, UI it's, implementation it's, of this whole thing. It's yeah. a bad UI implementation. But behind the scenes, it's made a huge difference to the way that ad companies, including Google, think about um, data collection. And at least it's the starting point for a conversation about mm -hmm. how we should be doing data. You know, is it is it better to have no GDPR at all? Okay, maybe there's no you know massive outcry, but you know when something goes wrong. But at least yeah. there's something there as a mechanism to hold some degree of accountability. And maybe going forward, we can build on it and have GDPR version 2 that puts Zuckerberg in jail, right? There's going to be a yeah. start, start somewhere. <laughs> it's a little cleaner. And the, like these things can get insidious really quickly, right? We've seen that, that whole iPhone uh, browser hacking story yeah. is insane. Like yeah. how deep that goes, and yeah. like that was that was targeting the the minority Uyghur Muslim population in China, and like that's terrifying. Like we we need better mechanisms uh, worldwide to deal with this stuff. But at the very least, I think like GDPR was a start. It the U.S. needs yeah. similar sorts of re regulations. I think we need stronger. Uh, the stronger federal departments to deal with this stuff too. Like it's and you know, this can is I how point out get there only one go. Can you're I point out the irony of what you just said that the only reason we know about that iPhone exploit is because of Google and yes, Project because Zero. Of Google. Yeah. Because yeah, because but it's not proving anything wrong. Like I'm saying, it's it's still a very insidious thing. If we like, I, I do think we rely. I think on, Google's doing know, a better CIA. job of monitoring Apple. Than the U.S. Yes, federal government, because they, they understand it more. But they we understand. rely on the CIA to, you know, filter international uh, chatter to see like where are the potential, uh, you know, terrorist attacks. Like, what are the potential dangers to the U.S.? What things could happen in the world? I don't think it's too much to ask. Like, I think we need something on that level to deal with the data that's actually happening around us and like the vulnerabilities that data opens up. Basically, yeah. yeah, and and no parent, no company will police itself. Like that's absolutely impossible. Yeah. That never happens, yeah. and that's for any company of any sort. Your first thought is to protect yourself. Something bad happens in your company. Your first thought will be, how do I protect myself from this instead of how to make sure that I follow the law to do the mm -hmm. right thing. So because of that, we need some sort of oversight that comes from outside of all all agencies. Period. Government agencies, computer, you know, companies, because it's it's impossible. Our our base nature is protection and save ourselves. It's a horrible thing to say, but we are, <laughs> you know, altruistic after the fact, not really during the moment when there's a shortage of something or we're in our own harm. Let's take a little break. Our show uh, today on the Twit Network follows a week of fun and games. We have made a fabulous little short movie for you to see what you missed watch previously on twit when you were at the grand canyon did you do they have rules against uh drones sending drones out and getting footage and... allegedly they have rules okay you know but no oh, i didn't okay. i didn't fly the drone this yeah. time okay i did take the dogs and let the dogs run around and they enjoyed the oh grand so you canyon. let the dogs out i did okay <laughs> okay <laughs> Twit live specials. Now, There's the Apple doing? 2019 event. There is a new iPhone, the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro, and the iPhone 11 Pro, Pro Max. Max. <laughs> All about Android. Pixel 4 leaks coming in strong. Assistant is going to be able to step in for you while you're on hold, apparently, uh, and notify you when a human is on the other end. It's like, we're going to put you on hold and make you wait. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm going to put your hold on hold and make <laughs> you wait, uh, which I can, I can get behind that. Security Now. Deepfakes has been in the news a lot. Facebook and Microsoft just announced an initiative to work on sort of counter AI that would be able to do deepfake detection. Tech News Weekly. It's a, a funny thing that HTC has come forward with, the HTC Vive Cosmos. You're not setting up webcams. You're not setting out tracking boxes. Bottom line is you plug this into the PC and that's it. Twit, now also available in several colors of unapologetic plastic. <laughs> but not corpse purple. Are you going to buy that new uh, Vive, Georgia? No, actually, we're not going to. We're not even buying the Vive Index. We got the um, Knuckles controllers, which are amazing. Very, Knuckles. very cool. Are they for yeah, Sonic I, and Knuckles? What are they for? No, here, wait. I'll let me okay, just grab. We're going to get a little demo here. of the yeah, Knuckles so controllers. Cool. While George is getting her Knuckles controllers, our show today brought to you by WWT, Worldwide Technology, and their Advanced Technology Center. They started building this 10 years ago. It actually filled a gap because it used to be, I remember we worked 
at the Ziff Davis Labs in Foster City, and there were these labs, and we would do all these reviews. But that went away. Where do you go now if you're enterprise and you want to know, is this going to work with what I'm using already? How do I incorporate NetApp or Cisco or VMware into my system? How does It's an amazing lab, half a billion dollars of equipment. Hundreds of OEMs, key partners ranging from heavyweights like NetApp, Cisco, and VMware to emerging disruptors like Tanium and Equinix and Expanse. This, is a, this lab is used by WWT's engineers to beta test new equipment, to build reference architectures, to set up custom integrations for WWT customers, to help those customers make the right decisions, to see what's going to happen, to see results with a lot less investment. It's really an incubator for IT innovation on demand and schedulable uh, labs i'll give you an example netapp cloud volumes on tap on tap on flash netapp disaster recovery as a service you could try all of these out you could see is this right for me is this going to work in my enterprise along with hundreds of other labs representing the newest advances in things like flash storage multi-cloud hyper converged infrastructure cloud data management you need to learn about these products before you launch them WWT's engineers use these environments to spin up proofs of concept and, and pilots. They have a sandbox. That way, customers can choose the best solution. But here's the best part. They now offer lab as a service, a dedicated lab within the ATC where customers can do their own programmatic testing using this half-billion-dollar ecosystem WWT has built. And because it's virtual, you don't have to go to St. Louis. You can use it anywhere in the world, anytime, 24-7. This digital platform is so cool. It is now launched. It covers the entire Advanced Technology Center ecosystem. And, man, it is the it is a multiplier for knowledge, speed, and agility anytime, anywhere around the world for their customers. You get access to articles, to case studies. You get those hands-on labs. You get tools that can make the difference in today's world. Things are changing fast. You need the ATC, you need WWT to learn more about Worldwide Technology, their Advanced Technology Center, and to sign up for access to their new on-demand lab platform. All you got to do is go to www.t.com slash twit. www.t.com slash twit. WWT simplifies the complex. www.t.com slash twit. Worldwide Technology delivering business and technology outcomes all over the world. That is awesome. Hey, if you applied for the $125 in Equifax <laughs> refund, you got more to do, kids. <laughs> I love this register article. You, uh, If you put in the $125 claim, by the way, you ain't going to get $125, but if you put in a $125 claim, you got an email on Friday that says validate or amend your claim, and Equifax explains even though you found out about its settlement, which they didn't want you to know about. You found the online address where you had to apply. Even though you inputted all the details you were asked for, even though you selected to take the cash option, you're not done. You now need to give them more information. Quote, your claim will not be received by the settlement administrator until you click the submit button after your electronic signature. For security reasons, once you hit submit, you will not be able to make any changes to your claim form. You have till October 15th to reconfirm. <laughs> I did it. Did you really? I can't I wait to I, see the check just, for 53 cents exactly, you get. Exactly. I, I don't care what money I'm getting. It's You're just, just going to do it to just, stick it to exactly, the man. Some, something. Uh, the problem is it's a giant, it's a pool. Well, here's the problem. It, FTC announced the $575 million settlement in July. Of the $575 million, they, they earmarked $125 million to compensate you and me and everybody who was affected by the Equifax breach. Oh, but wait a minute. <laughs> in fact, those were the headlines, but in fact, FTC has only really agreed to $31 million, mm -hmm. a pot of money that will split equally among all the people who apply. Yeah. If only a quarter of a million people out of the 175 million people affected apply, then you'll get $125 per person. <laughs> so I'm glad it. about this, this that is, thing. If only one in four, no, no, I'm sorry. What is that? Four times 175. If one in like 650 applies, then you get 125 bucks. 
But it but it goes down fast <laughs> if more people apply. You're right. It's make it hard. It's almost like the FTC is woefully equipped oh. to deal with this problem. This is why I can't get so excited else. about government intervention. Do we need a different agency? We Would need it be something better? I think that maybe understands the issue more and can actually implement harsher penalties. Implement because it. right now yeah. all the FTC can yeah. really do is give them fines that don't matter and that nobody <laughs> they don't actually have to pay basically like right. it, people aren't getting compensated so a little math if uh, a million people out of the 175 million apply well you'll get 31 dollars but carson if everybody who's eligible applies you'll get 21 cents <laughs> Woo Woo, i'm rich that's uh, the postcard to send you the money will cost more <laughs> the uh, stamp yeah uh, you know i just I agree. We it feels like we should do something, but I'm afraid that anything we do is going to be the wrong thing, and it's going to make it worse. I just feel like that's the problem. Uh, well, let's talk about something nice and happy. The the Pixel Four. What do we know? Because Devendra, anything? I mean, there are a lot of leaks. When leaks. when is this going to be announced? I've been mostly iPhone focused, so sorry, I do not have. No, this specs. is that. That's what happens. Right. But now yeah. you can pivot your attention. The yeah. iPhone's over. It's pixel time. It's pixel time. Pixel time. There's so much. I think the most notable thing about the the Pixel 4 and the amount of leaks, and it's like, yes, it's got, you know, okay, great camera, great, you know, all those extra things. I think the thing for me that is the most interesting about the Pixel 4 is, like, how much more integrated and how much how much better, how better mm -hmm. um, the yes. the Google Assistant is compared to Siri. It really is. Like it? it's yeah. it's kind of unbelievable how far I I hate you know as a bit of an Apple fanboy I hate saying it but like how woefully bad Siri is compared mm -hmm. to Google Assistant. I mean they announced why don't the, more people saw, buy Pixels? The camera's better. The Assistant's better. What why because you're in the ecosystem, right? But the you know I think we just saw in that promo for for all about Android where they've got you know the the feature that will put you. Put the, if you're on a if you're on hold on a call, it will tell you when someone come, yeah. come. tell you when someone's come back, and it's like, how you know? I can barely get Apple to to to, to call my mum at the right <laughs> point, right? It's true. And it's like, it's true. How how is Google? You know, the fact is that Google is collecting it, all this stuff, and it is making those products better. And the Pixel Four will be. You know, will be a better product because you've got that camera. You know, on your porch. And, yeah. you know, I think it's, 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 it, it is interesting that whilst we talk about all the stuff about data, like when you're talking about the interesting new things on the Pixel 4, um, for me, the, the assistant stuff is is like the most interesting stuff. Microsoft, yeah. it is, go ahead. It makes a huge difference too. Like I have to say using Siri is, is, Siri is a painful, painful experience. That's because you need I, more I people to, to listen to like, what you're saying and grade it to make it better. <laughs> but they're they're not spending the time where they should be a hundred percent, and you know I I do sometimes mm -hmm. think that she's she's suffered a head head injury or something's wrong with her every time <laughs> I speak with her. Um, whereas Google's assistant is brilliant and go home, Siri, you're drunk. So much more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something she needs a little bit of help. <laughs> You know, but no, I, Siri, you know. I mean, that's the point. Siri needs to tell me when to go home because I'm drunk. <laughs> and I feel like Google Assistant can do she's, that. As she's not Siri able hasn't to got to the hell with you, Siri. You're wrong. Go away. I'm not it drunk. definitely it has more to do with like the way those two assistants work too, right? Like Siri is more like locally based. Like a lot of the processing is happening on your phone. Uh, the the sound, the voice recognition isn't as good, even though they're still using some of the cloud-based things, I believe, uh, from Nuance. Uh, whereas Google Assistant is very much cloud-based. Like it's doing all that work and very quickly. So Google has done that work, basically, to make all that integration work. And that Apple Nest Home not. Hub Max, man, that thing, I could say, let me see my front door. It goes, hi, Leo. <laughs> How you doing? Here's what you're doing today. It's going to be a nice day, but you should bring an umbrella. It's great. I love it. It knows everything. You're looking great, kid. You're looking great, kid. <laughs> I don't know why they don't put more of that in there. Man, you look good today, Leo. What a personality. Yeah, a little personality. I well, oh, we're going to get that. Yeah. I no, I have John Legend. It's uh, my Google voice is John Legend. You know you could do that, right? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So oh. John Legend greets me in the morning. Hmm. Yeah. That's great. I'd That's rather great. have Chrissy Teigen, but okay, I'll take John Legend. It's okay. It's not <laughs> They both have great voices. They need more variety, to be honest, in the uh, in the voices. 
there's there's so much more potential to have fun with those things too. I was just using Waze on a family trip, and I made the voice Cookie Monster. Isn't that to, fun? Uh, <gasps> it's fun. Oh it's my fun. God. And my yeah, my daughter loved like it, like even though she didn't. Turn know right happening. now. Yeah. Yes. But also, Waze do that, like, doesn't keep those voices and they go away ago, all of a sudden. Tom Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Tom yeah. Tom was doing that like 10 years ago. See, it's yes. mad that we haven't like moved I on. I had like, Dennis Hopper's same. voice on my Tom Tom. And it was Why? so funny. He was like, <laughs> what? He was like, you've arrived. Why would anyone want to go here? It was just, <laughs> I love it. it was so stoned out and wild. And then remember, oh, I, had a, I, had a, I had a Yoda one that told you to turn the wrong direction. Yes. Portal, uh, <laughs> the, there was a GLaDOS. Remember the Portal game where GLaDOS Horrible. was the evil oh, robot? Yeah, you could yeah. have a GLaDOS yes. voice. And it would always yeah. give you the wrong directions. It would say, turn left here when you're supposed to turn right. Yeah. <laughs> that was a dangerous voice assistant to use. But Not it was, great. Not it was great. so cool. You know, as that. we dive more into these virtual assistants, I want these voices. I want, like, cool, unique voices because that would that'll probably make up for maybe some of the privacy we're giving up here. Uh, I'm still waiting <laughs> for you my see, Matt Berry. You Mary see, you see, just you need Cookie a little Monster. candy oh, yes. and you'll hop want, in that van and go anywhere. Absolutely. I don't know if you guys watch uh, what we do in the shadows or the IT crowd, but uh, I, I want my Matt Berry yeah. GPS voice because he has such a great, yes. uh, dramatic, hilarious comedic voice. And why I, I want him you giving me that. directions. Yeah. What I don't understand, and I, I don't, Just I tell you to drive to to a bat all the time. I feel like I'm beating my head <laughs> against the wall. But why is it that we still have to say "Hey Shlomo" or "Hey Guillermo"? Mm -hmm. Why can't we say whatever we want? We I did that four years ago on my Moto X. Why is it that, right? Why do we can't we customize the trigger words? Wouldn't that go a long way to making these things better? But what would how would make you it a little easy want to it make to you know if you're talking rhetorically to yourself, you don't want it to be constantly answering either. No, but that's why or, you make it something unusual. My on the Moto X, it was "Help me, Obi Wan Kenobi," <laughs> which was a, right. a phrase I was very unlikely to say in any other context. <laughs> I had to be careful when watching Star Wars episode. It's a very four. long phrase, yeah. But it was a and it was a nice thing. It was a long phrase. Now, if that phone ages ago could do it, I still don't, I don't understand why no one is doing that. Why can't we customize the trigger? Wouldn't that help with nice. these false, uh, you know, uh, wakes and all that stuff? Well, I think it plays into what um, what Devendra was saying about like doing things locally versus doing things in the cloud. And I think it's the wider, you know, there is a wider trend that we see, you know, even across like the camera things and these combinations of like better hardware and better software combined with computing in the cloud. You know, the fact that Google can do all these, you know, all this computational photography that layers things on top of each other. You know, you've got to imagine that they're doing similar level kind of, of sophistication mm -hmm. stuff. I think it has to be on right device. Now, just there, yeah. Even right? the Moto well, X there, must have been on device. It didn't have to send the trigger phrase all the Remember the Moto way X to, had like a, it had a low power processor that was kind of doing always stuff on. in the background. It was always on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was a really unique uh, hardware setup, basically. No other phone had that. Google didn't right. really bring that over to other phones. Well, so, but you could. I mean, that, yeah. the, all these devices are you plugged could. in. Uh, I mean, maybe not my phone, but all the other devices are plugged in. My, yeah. I just don't understand it. Microsoft. We'll see more of that. I want a one-word trigger, honestly. Like, no, I'm tired you of don't. Saying, yeah, no, I want it. I want it to understand. Like, it, it if it's a unique word, uh, like uh, to me, that would be more convenient. And I also want them to like pop up. Like, we need more natural language interaction. Yeah. So if I like look at something, and it's like, hey, can you do this? Um, I would like my phone to yeah. kind of understand that. And yeah. we are getting like eye tracking and things we'll like that. There. So we'll get there. We'll get there. My Google Home Hub Nest Max uh, thing, when it, the alarm goes off in the morning, I don't have to say, hey, Google. I just go, stop. <laughs> and it stops. And he gets it's, it. It's very satisfying. <laughs> it's actually really great. It beats slamming yeah, your you hand do the down same, on the top of the do, alarm. You can do the same thing by throwing it against the wall. Yeah. No, but yeah. stop is great. And it, I don't have to say "Hey, you" or anything. It just, it just for some reason, it just knows. It, <laughs> what would your word be, though, uh, Devendra? If it was just, it'd have to be have a to weird word. It. It'd have to yeah, be weird like word. Rumpelstiltskin, platypus. platypus. Yeah, yeah, or three syllables. Like Kofivi. I don't, I don't want to say two words. Kofivi. But like, you know, something that would be a good word. Something. That would never come up. <laughs> Kofivi. Yeah. <laughs> I think you want more syllables. I'm thinking. 
it's more syllables is yeah. kind of the key at least three syllables but i just want something a little more natural like i've been following nuance uh, nuance and dragon naturally speaking and all this tech for so long and that's they another can company do it. That's, yeah, they can do they can it, do it but is... they they've held a strangled hold on this technology because they've been super anti-competitive for so long right. so like there's there's a lot of stuff that we still are waiting to get a, a lot more natural language technology that needs to happen, but we're getting there. It's going to be exciting. I think like, I just want to talk to my phone. All right. A few more like stories, uh, but it's 420. So I have to do an ad. Um, great to have you, Will Harris. I don't know why it's been so long, but we will get you back here more. I miss you guy. CEO of a brand new company <laughs> that will help podcasters and podcast listeners finally get it the way they want it. And tail E N T A L E dot co. Uh, at Will Harris one L on the Twitter. Do you tweet still? I do still tweet. It's uh, aren't you an old timer? More, yeah, more. There was there was a time I remember in 2007. I was one of the top top 20 tweeters in the UK, and that lasted for about a day. I before, was number uh, one in 2007. I had I had 5,000 followers. I was number one. And that damn Kevin Rose, he stopped answering emails and, and <laughs> climbed up and beat me. <laughs> and then Ashton Kutcher came Kevin along Rose and the whole trick. thing went to hell in a handbasket. Georgia Dow, do you tweet? I almost never. Almost no. never. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> no. Almost never. No, it's, it's, um, I'm, it's relaxing. I read, but I, you know, sometimes I'll look at Twitter and, and then get unrelaxed. So I right. get, yeah. So it's no fun. Georgia is a, is actually a good person to talk to about this because she is uh, the author of anxiety videos, which are not to make you anxious, but to help you handle anxiety. And uh, that is at anxiety-videos.com. Conflict resolution, emotional intelligence, how to sleep better, how to parent better. It's all in here. These are great. And I highly recommend them, anxiety-videos.com. She does that in her copious spare time in between playing virtual reality games, slashing around with Beat Saber, and writing for imore.com. And finally, Devendra Hardwar. He is the senior editor at Engadget, the senior gadget blog in the whole wide world. And pretty senior. Yeah. Pretty senior. You're right up there. Looks like you're getting a little gray. Is that just an artifact of the light, or is there a little? Gray? Oh no, I've been. I mean, I've been oh. getting gray since I was a teenager, but oh. it's definitely. Uh, I like you know, it. Babies, babies kind of accelerate. All they that, will right? do that. Mm. Ba yeah. Presidency or babies, <laughs> either one makes you go gray. <laughs> uh, Devinder also is a host of the Slash Film Podcast. Oh. Yes, Slash Film Cast. Oh, there's it's, it. Uh, oh. There's it. That movie is so long. So long. <laughs> it's really. It's like three hours. <laughs> it's three hours. Long. It's ridiculous. Yeah does not need to be three hours uh, long. We sent the kids, the 16-year-olds, to see it. Lisa had to pretend she was going because it's an R-rated film. So she's a <laughs> scofflaw. Uh, she, she, she went in and she went right out. But uh, They actually check. That's a oh, yeah. They said, you huh. can't, you kids, you kids aren't, uh, aren't 18. You can't go in. So uh, she went in with them and then left because she didn't want to see it. But explain, because I haven't seen it. The kids came home and started digging a trench in our backyard. Is there some scene where they dig a hole in the ground? It's a good sense. Yeah. A good time. I don't know. I don't, now I have a trench in my backyard. They say, yeah, we want to cover it with a tarpaulin. <laughs> what are they trying? They're trying to trap clowns in my backyard. What are they doing? Man, kids today. There's a very, you. very bad backstory in there somewhere. Leo. I Your think kids so. Are it's a little weird. <laughs> they, they come in and they say, do you have any shovels? <laughs> Got any I want to know what the neighbors thought. <laughs> I need some shovels, some duct tape, rope. And a couple of oven mitts. You got those? <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. They're right over there. Our show keep today. <laughs> you just keep it outside, kids. <laughs> kids today, I tell you. At least they're not out in the streets getting in trouble, right? That's Our true. Right. Our show today. Do you must have a tape for that? <laughs> what to do if your kids are digging, digging, digging ditches, digging trenches in your backyard? Um. Our show today brought to you by Wasabi. You know when you have sushi, you get that nice green ball of hot wasabi. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about something hot, but it's hot cloud storage. Wasabi, such a great idea. This is created as an alternative. It's, it's hot cloud storage. It blows away the competition, including Google, including Microsoft, including Amazon. Created by my good friend, David Friend. He started Carbonite. He's actually a serial entrepreneur. goes way back, ARP synthesizer and stuff. And his CTO, Jeff Flowers, 
they came up with a way back in the carbonite days to lay data on disks sequentially as opposed to in blocks. They have got the patent. And as a result, you get storage that's 80% cheaper and up to six times faster than Amazon's S3. Just because they're using, it's a fifth the cost of S3. It uses Amazon's API, but they don't charge for egress. There's no hidden fees for API requests. You get 11 nines of durability. You get data center redundancy, data integrity checking. Here's the thing I like the best, and this is a real answer to the true ransomware crisis we're in right now. You get something called immutable storage. You can't at any time say, that data, that data there, that can't be changed. That can't be touched. No ransomware can destroy it. No human in error can erase it. That is immutable storage. That makes it more secure than your on-premises storage. It's amazing. HIPAA compliant, FINRA compliant, CJIS compliant. I know if you're looking to go to the cloud, and everybody is these days, and I know, I know you're already, you've got the list. It's Google, Microsoft, Amazon. I know, I know that. I just want to add a fourth name. Just check it out. Wasabi.com, W-A-S-A-B-I. This is hot cloud storage. And in order to compete with the big boys, they've got to be better. And they are. Lightning fast, totally secure, completely affordable, never any charge for egress or API requests. This is disruptive technology. you got to try it. Look at all the companies that are starting to use Wasabi. I'm, I feel really good about this because I've known David for years. He's when he's, when he launched this company, we talked, he said this, I just, I believe in this. We got to get the word out and I'm glad to help wasabi.com. Well, I'll tell you what we can do. We got a free trial for you. You get one anyway at the site, but what we can do is make that an unlimited free trial. Use the offer code twit. Put all the data you can possibly put up there. If you use the offer code twit, unlimited free access for a month so upload it like crazy and if you have petabytes of data ask about the wasabi ball you can you can get that data up there fast it's really cool wasabi.com thank you wasabi for your support so we don't know when the google event will be we do know there will be a microsoft event they've announced uh, october 2nd mm -hmm. just a few weeks off and it'll probably be a surface event right devendra yeah, most likely. This is, I think, last year, October 2nd was the last one. It's the same one. exact they, day, yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. And uh, they typically have a Surface event every year now. What's interesting is that they're always pretty low-key. Like, uh, Microsoft doesn't run, like, they don't have a stage presentation. Last year, they didn't even live stream it. It was just, like, a short, you know, a small thing for press. This year, it's going to be live streamed. Um, I think, you know, I think we're going to see some really interesting things here, too. We are waiting for some, like, Surface laptop updates, some Surface book updates. And it sounds like um, they're hinting at new experiences. And I'm thinking, given how everything is going this year, I'm thinking we may see something dual screen. And that would be kind of fun. There have been rumors, haven't there? Yeah. And there like is a dual even screen code. tablet, like a courier thing. Yeah. yeah there's even code in, in Windows that would in, encourage us to think this. Mm -hmm. um, so we will stream it. We'll cover it live October 2nd. It's out in New York City because they're streaming it. We can do our, nice. you know, our traditional Mystery Science Theater 3000 coverage of it. We sit in front of the screen and mock I love it. those, by the way. I, I'd much Thank rather um, watch those. Yeah. It's kind of, so really the best way to watch anything like an Apple event or a Microsoft mm -hmm. event is with friends, like in a big group, yeah. like watch it at work yeah. or with friends. Other people would care because it's so much fun to throw you know, spitballs and, <laughs> and mock it and just to talk about it and then get excited when it's excited, cheer when it's something to cheer. So for those of you who can't watch it in a group like that, Watch it with us. We're we're a group. We'll we'll all watch. I will. It I will say for people who don't pay attention to Microsoft hardware anymore, I am far more excited by Microsoft's hardware these days than Apple's hardware. Yeah. Like it's it just not, especially when it comes to PCs. Like they are making some of the best laptops around. They're consistently great. They have keyboards with travel, and they feel <laughs> amazing. Like I, I'm just so impressed with what they've been doing. They're so the I'm underdogs. They have I'm, to you know, rise to the occasion and do something yeah. to wow us to get some press. I'm all good That's for that. Competition, competition makes it yeah. much more fun. Yeah. I have to say, I had the Surface Studio here for a long time and I've switched over to right? a Lenovo, Lenovo all-in-one that does the same thing. It's got the mm -hmm. shallow angle. It has a knob, but the knob is a USB Ooh. knob that plugs in like that. And I can- so It doesn't have the dial. Well, it is like a dial though, because I can program uh -huh. it to do different things. Yeah. This is the mute button. I mean, you, it's programmable. Uh -huh. In fact, it will sense different apps 
you can't really see because of the wire. Cool. It'll sense different apps. The color will change if I'm running Photoshop, and it'll have different. You can have different mm -hmm. tasks assigned. The other thing I really like about this, it also comes with a pencil. It's half the cost of the Surface with a much faster processor, 32 gigs of RAM, and this pad right here. You can't see it, but behind that screen is a Qi charger, so I can put my phone on it and it charges. Ooh. I know. That's now, kinda, does it go fully flat, yeah. Leo? It goes uh, almost as flat as the Surface Studio. Not completely, but you don't, you want, it's like a drafting table. I think it's 20 degrees, not 15, but I, for half the cost, 27 inches. Also it's 16, nine, not three by two. What do you think of three by two? Microsoft really likes that three by two aspect ratio. I think for laptops, it's kind of nice. I like yeah. having a little more vertical space. Like I can, I can see more in a web browser. 16 by nine is so limiting. And I think we've just all kind of gotten used to it, but it was because of TV, like, right? I like having I mean, more. That was the reason. Yeah. So you could watch movies and that kind of thing. And also people, I think they were just making those panels. So everybody was making 16 by nine panels. And it's kind of what we've stuck with. Yeah. Yeah. I like 16 by 10, which is widescreen, but a little bit, a little bit more. Um, we've seen that on some surfaces too. So it's expected there'll be a, at least a Surface laptop update, maybe mm -hmm. a Surface tablet update. Yeah, we're waiting for a new Surface Pros. I wouldn't be surprised if we see like another Surface Arm thing, just because it's basically been the flagship Windows Arm device, and it started out terribly, and it's gotten better. So I'm interested to see what happens there. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm also really. I feel like the fact that they're streaming it implies there's something, as you say, there's oh, yeah. something interesting. They want people to see something. Yeah. 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 Otherwise, you don't stream if it's just, yeah, we got new Surface. Basically, yeah. Laptops, yeah. yeah. But will it come in corpse purple? <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I bought the Surface laptop that came with Alcantara on it. Ah, yeah. It was the fuzzy, it had a fuzzy keyboard. How'd that hold up? Did it get dirty? It didn't get used did a whole lot, so it's hard did to you, say. Like, <laughs> like when you eat Doritos, did it change colors? Yes, do and... not. Okay, so this is yeah. absolutely true. No Cheetos, no Doritos, because it will, uh, the, the cheese Leave. will adhere to the Alcantara. <laughs> it's not a good look. It's not it feels good, though. It feels, it feels nice. It's nice to have yeah. that wrist rest be a little kind of sweaty thing. That's great. I, I mean, nice we're seeing weird things. I don't think the wrist rest is the reason not to eat Cheetos. And uh... <laughs> what do you mean? What are you trying to say? It's a great American food. Um, somebody in the chat room, Rodney said, "Okay, October second, but don't forget the Bill Gates documentary comes out September twentieth, Friday." Oh yeah. This is the Netflix. Uh, now I think Gates was heavily involved, so I doubt. There'll be a lot of like Epstein stuff in there. This is going to be very fluffy. It's yeah. going to be a, it's going to be a, as the uh, as the Oxfordian. What do you call that? Oxonian might say it's a hagiography, hey, right? <laughs> yes. Right. It'll yeah, be. Yeah, I wonder if they'll have to do a second version of it to include the internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is deep a cut. Deep inside. Deep book. inside. Uh, let's see. There's a couple other stories uh, I wanted to mention. Microsoft's Minecraft has, get, get this, 112 million monthly active users. That is amazing. People love it. I People think. love it. Mm -hmm. My kids now are playing uh, VR Minecraft. Apparently, there's a there's a hookup that yep. you can with the uh, with the mm -hmm. uh, is it with the Vive or with the Quest? I can't remember which, but they're playing it in VR. And what's neat is they had built a job. We have. I'm running a bunch of minecraft servers at home and they had built like this giant city it's it's like it's got a sewer system it's got a lighting system it's like in, <laughs> it's got a tr subway it's bigger than new york it's huge it's got hospitals there's helicopters there's a medevac helicopter and all of a sudden this thing that they built in a 2d environment they can walk into it it's mind cool. blowing that's Isn't cool. That? Very, That's very cool. cool. And it's just yeah. great. I love how creative mind like you can really, it's your imagination that is your limit. And there's some amazing, like really, really cool things that people have built. Like Yeah. Uh, I, I, and I'm sure when they launch the, uh, the AR the version too. Yeah, basically. When they launch uh Minecraft Earth, the uh the AR version. Yeah, where version is that? They that advertised that months ago. Where the hell is they that? They said it was coming, they were gonna beta test in the summer, and maybe that happened. But yeah, it's a, it, it has it been has beta been testing quiet. elsewhere. 
Not in okay. the U.S. Where? In Romania? Okay. Where? Uh, I can't remember the countries, but okay. I think mm. one of them was New Zealand. Um, oh, uh, everything. Several, several countries. They but test not everything in, the US. in New Zealand first for some yeah. reason. So I, I did the demo for that like before the build conference. It's it's amazing. It is fantastic. Like what they are able to do. Um, I can't wait. It's it's definitely going to be the next Pokemon Go, basically. Oof. <sighs> and finally, Movie Pass calls it quits. <laughs> uh, so long. You know, if you were smart enough to get a movie pass and use it like crazy, yeah. you yeah. helped burn that sure. hundred million dollars in 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 funding. Sure. <laughs> uh, I, it's amazing that they were able to raise money on a a business model that just didn't seem to have any way to make money. Nope, not yeah, at all. I remember all. Like, Leo, you talking about how you were like unsure how they could ever make money from this when it first came out. But I was too stupid to get one. You didn't get one. Because the the thing is, if if somebody wants to burn money, well, yeah, you take advantage. Help them. Our old editor sure. Josh. Josh uh, loved his movie. He loved pass. his movie pass. He spent yeah. so much of their money. To? He was he was going to like a movie a day. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. So really, this That's is why incredible. Movie Pass went out of business is because of Josh. It was him. Yeah. <laughs> it was all. It was pretty much all Josh Windish. So for ten dollars yeah. a month, you could see a movie every single day. They raised mm -hmm. a, a big um, box, um, but it just didn't have any way to make money. It's uh, so here's the thing. Movie Pass, I think, launched in like 2012, and they went through a lot of different. It was forms. expensive like, when they first started. It was forty. It was super expensive. Month. It was like yeah. forty to fifty bucks. Yeah. And then before the card came out, uh, the card was like their little tech invasion. Because before Movie Pass, there wasn't a way to like remotely add funds to a debit card or something like they they had figured something out that was kind of cool uh, but before you would have to like print out a sheet and bring yeah. it to the theater and like get them to scan and it theaters and might so turn well. it down too theaters hated the it. theaters rebelled against yeah. all of this like the theaters didn't want them like it was a big big fight and when the ten dollar pricing happened uh i talked to the new ceo i think his name was mitch Lowe, and he was a guy who came out of red box he was the guy who was like red box one dollar a night That's he seemed a success, like a right? smart guy he seemed like he had yeah. a plan and that's his plan is basically super low pricing to encourage as much growth as possible. And that worked, but they didn't have the rest of the plan figured out. Yeah. So like when millions of people actually signed up, yeah. they didn't they didn't know how to like actually keep buying these tickets. And then they had to like start uh, canceling tickets from major mm -hmm. screenings, like major movies, like they just wouldn't list it in the app. And it just got so shady and so messy as a customer experience. Like I called this company dead a year ago because it, it felt dead. Like there, there was nothing really going on here. But at the very least, we got um, all the cinema chains kind of paying attention to this and launching their own subscription services. So I, I'm a big fan of AMC um, A-List. If you I think live near an AMC theater, it's a good yeah. way to do it. But you have to be near an it's AMC amazing. theater. Yeah, You have to be near it an AMC. It feels like the legacy of Movie Pass will, will be the, the native yeah. cinema passes, right? right. We have that yeah. Because even, they, they even can't in beat London, that. they're starting to do, yeah. you know. So when well, it just makes when, sense. When Michelo took over, they had twenty thousand subscribers. He was really good at hyper growth. Got them to three million subscribers by a year ago. Five percent of all the movie tickets sold in the U.S. were purchased through Movie Pass, and they were losing twenty-one million dollars a month. Did they well, pay well, the I, theaters the full freight? Is that yeah, how it yeah, worked? Yeah, they, yes. they pay the full price. Like that's how it was. I think <laughs> they got bought by a private equity company, and that's the problem. Like once yeah. that happens, they want they want a multiple. You know, they want to sell this company for multiples of what it's worth or something, and they weren't getting enough funding to kind of keep it all going. So, too too successful too quickly, I guess. Yeah. At this yeah. final stage, that was their big problem. Yeah. They didn't think of step two when they have all of those subscribers. What do they now yeah. do? Right. <laughs> that, that, that well, I think Low. Yeah. I think Low did have a plan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of marketing and yes, this is the. He's know. a marketing guy. Like yeah. he knew the market. He had the marketing down. They didn't have the logistics down. They didn't have like, uh, basically a parent company that would actually support them to grow. Like if they got. <laughs> Uh, if they got a decent amount of funding in to keep it going, I think if this was like five years ago, maybe uh, in the dot com bubble was like a, a bit hotter. Like they probably would have been able to like fight through it. Like Uber, how much money is Uber losing? You know, Uber yeah, yeah, right. as, as a company, who knows if they'll ever be profitable, but they're still going because they got all this early VC money and everybody just wants them to succeed, basically. Yeah. 
Folks, I think it's time to wrap this guy up for the week. Hey, really, really fun to have you all here. Devendra Hardawar, where is Slash Film? How can somebody listen to this great podcast? If you go to SlashFilm.com, there's a, there's a link up top to the Slash Film cast. Or if you go to SlashFilmCast.com, dot com you'll go straight to the itunes page subscribe uh it's you know it's, it's a good it's a good show we have a lot of fun and uh, i'm looking forward to talking about ad astra that new uh the, the brad, new brad pitt, pitt movie Would you, have you seen it i yet? hear really good things i haven't I seen too. it yet i'm seeing it next week but i've heard good things mm -hmm. i'm also gonna be talking about undone that new uh rotoscoped animation show on amazon it is incredible. So my mm. the one takeaway from everything I'm saying tonight, go watch Undone. It's you won't regret now. it. It's an and amazing show. Amazon you on Prime? List? It's on Amazon Prime. It's from the Bojack Horseman creator and oh, uh, one of the writers from Bojack. Yeah. And it's so it's so good. It's just great science fiction rooted in a really great personal story. Rotoscope is kind of neat. That's like Waking Life where they take actually, they yes. actually film the, mo the motion, but then they draw over each frame individually. So yeah. it's animated, so this is rotoscoping but... and like 3D sets and stuff too. So I wrote a bit about this in Gadget. Um, it it just looks incredible. It makes it makes me hope we see more rotoscope projects in the future because it's a really useful technique for a show like this. Oh, this is gonna be good. I'll watch it tonight. Thank you. Great Enjoy. tip, Georgia Dow. What are you playing on your VR? I these am. Days? I'm playing Falcon Falcon Story. I think Falcon Story Falcon Age. Anyways, yes. Falcon so Age. Fal Ooh, that's you, supposed you to be really good. As, yeah, you're you're a falconer. You have your falcon, which I totally want to do in real life is become a falconer. And so you get your falcon, you send it off, you get to gather things. It's got a little bit of, uh, you know, you plant food and take care of uh, your falcon. It's it's really fun. It's cute. I've been waiting for it. it. It does it does a good job. There's a few. It's a little bit glitchy in some areas, um, but. It's really wonderful, and I'm I'm having a lot of fun playing I it. I have the that, graphics are stunning. I love the idea that. So, do you have it hunt? What do you What do you have it do? Yes, you, and it's very intuitive. So you whistle, you put your hands just to your mouth, and your falcon will come to you. Oh, that's so and cool. if you point to what on one hand it's sending, you know, it's your falcon hand. You point to something, the falcon will go and attack or bring it to you. And so, <laughs> it's. It's really can, cute. And you, you can get, fist bump the falcon. You can, oh, you can give it a beard. It's like the <laughs> cutest thing ever. And when you touch the falcon and pet it, it you actually feel a little bit of a rumble oh, on, wow. on your controllers. So I like really seeing this because this is innovative. This is not just trying to take a first person shooter and put it in VR. No, it's yeah. something, it's just different. And that interaction that you have with your falcon, it feels very real. You get Neat. very attached to the, the Falcon. The storyline um, is good, not fabulous or great, but it's pretty good. And the um, conversations and discussions that you have with people there are, mm, it's okay. So, but the Falcon itself- <laughs> that sounds like real life. <laughs> <laughs> but not on this show. We had Never. amazing conversations. No, very good. Georgia Dow, anxiety-videos.com for those great videos. And of course, read her all the time at imore.com. Lovely having you here. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. And it's so great to welcome my old pal, old buddy, old pal, Will Harris. It sounds like you're doing great. I can't wait to hear more about Entail. It seems like that's the way to listen to podcasts. We got we to gotta get involved here. This looks really good. Yeah. I, I iOS only right now. Android coming. iOS only right now. Android coming. It's a great way of adding more interaction and more um, kind of discoverability into your podcast. We think it could be the future of what podcasting looks like. Um, and so we'd encourage it. We, I'd love everybody listening to, to go and give it a go. Send nice. us a little, there's a little feedback app, a button in the app and you can try it. You can import stuff from iTunes and hopefully our, uh, you know, the AI and the things that we're using to build all this kind of rich, interactive visual content will keep getting better and better. Twit looks pretty good on it already. We'd love to, um, to oh, really? do some more to make it look even better. You've tried better. it with so, Twit? Really? Is there enough, yeah, so there's enough uh, d uh, metadata that you can actually get some video and stuff? Yeah, so we've nice. got, you know, it pulls up your uh, your little profile from IMDB and the things that you're talking about. <laughs> all the links there's directly Mint, to your there's ads. There's Mint Mobile, you we mentioned and, that. Yeah, that's so nice. There's our stuff. advertisers. So it, oh, I like it. So, uh, yeah, give it a go. I Thank you. E-N-T-A-L-E dot C-O. Wow, I didn't want the show to end. 
It's been a lot of fun. Let's go Thank good. you, everybody. Let's go. Let's do another hour. No, let's not. Uh, we, <laughs> we do Twit every Sunday afternoon, right after the radio show, about 2.30 Pacific. That's 5.30 Eastern Time, 21.30 UTC. If you want to watch or listen live, we've got live streams at twit.tv slash live. But you can also ask your Amazon Echo or other uh, voice assistant to uh, stream or listen to or play Twit Live, and you'll probably be able to hear what we're doing, too. If you're doing that, by all means, go into the chat room, irc.twit.tv. They're all listening live, too, and you can talk amongst yourselves. Sometimes our hosts go in there. George is in there. I'm in there. That's fun. Uh, you can also listen at your convenience. I know that's the most important thing for most people. Listen when you want. Just download a copy of it from uh, our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast application, and you will get a copy the minute it's available, ever, just in time for your Monday morning commute. You can also, again, with a voice assistant, say uh, something like Echo, play This Week in Tech, and you will get the latest version of the podcast. Thanks, everybody. Um, is there anything more? Oh, a great triangulation this week with my friend John O'Bacon. He's an expert on community and how to build community. Uh, you, you'll enjoy that. If you haven't heard the triangulation, go to twit.tv slash TRI. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Another Twit. This is, is amazing. Bye-bye. Doing the twit.